Say that. I'll, I'll warn you. We're in limbo. Yeah, we're live. We're live. Okay. Alexandre. Hey, Christian. I'm here. Let's so let's wait for like two minutes, see if people show up. And otherwise yeah, we just sure. start. They can watch it later. Mm -hmm. Play something. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I should have the, like, this cool intro music. And then um, I could play something. I could play something that we played. No. <laughs> ah, right. <laughs> 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 but the video is doing really well. Doing really well on, on uh, Facebook. On Did YouTube? you see that? Uh, uh, it's like 2,000 views. Two, yeah, 2,300, two, I think. Okay. That's not bad. Yeah. So let's see how many people are online. <laughs> Once we hit five people, we start. Okay. <laughs> or, but are or, we live or, or, or not? Or two minutes, whatever comes first. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. But are we live or no? Yes, we're uh, live. I, and there are four uh, people yeah, okay, watching. Okay. But two of us okay. are, <laughs> that's me and you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice. Dennis. <laughs> Dennis is already in the chat. And okay. Ali. Hi, Dennis. <laughs> Ali Chisholm. Do you know him? Uh, I'm not sure. No, no. Uh, oh, 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 can I see the chat? Yeah, uh, and Actually, Dennis, is, uh, Dennis is here to troll. He says he's here to troll, but I can block yeah. him. I can block you really fast, Dennis. Really. Yeah. <laughs> I already have my hand on your name. The only have to do, have to do is put user in timeout i can put you in timeout i can hide <laughs> you on this channel i can report you and remove you so you're you, warned you <laughs> I'm, I'm slightly disappointed you you don't have a shortcut to to do that <laughs> without even touching the mouse and now there's six people <laughs> six people so let's um, let's start so hello everyone welcome to a live stream on my channel it's not something i do regularly but i did on last week and i was thinking i should maybe I'll do more of them, especially maybe with violin players, because people always ask me for you should make violin videos, but I don't have the <laughs> I don't have the resolve to do it because I know not many people will watch it, so I never find the <laughs> the, the the drive to prepare like uh, lines and stuff. But I could do a live stream because it takes really very little preparation. So I'm here today with my uh, my good buddy Alexander Tripodi. Hey. Uh, we everyone. share a uh, we share a very uh, interesting experience because we <laughs> he was the last person I saw before the lockdown and I was your f last person right yeah exactly yeah because what happened was we uh, we were recording videos for the 20k uh, sub goal on my channel which already passed it's now it's almost 21 but I wanted to uh, celebrate it with like special videos. So invi I invited some of my friends to record some special videos in a studio, and we did that. And then the next day there was a lockdown, and we all felt really bad that we actually was were in a studio with like six people, <laughs> pretty close yeah. together. Remember that? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. <laughs> it's actually, hard to forget. You called me next day and said, "Man, you shouldn't go out of your house anymore." <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. It uh, it happened so suddenly that, yeah. Yeah, it was really strange, really strange. And since yeah, I've never, I've never, I've not seen anyone since except my parents once, and they were in my garden, and we kept like distance. So you were really yeah. the last person I saw yeah. that is not direct family. Yeah, it's pretty much the same for me. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, although I have a garden, and also uh, Sam, uh, Sam Gersman, the bass player, player. Yeah. Um, he, he agreed to 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 bring a bass <laughs> to me. So. I saw him as well. But oh, you didn't really jam or briefly. something? No, no. Well, I just just one tune on the terrace, but I, I, I yeah, I wasn't sure about the neighbors and oh, everything. Right, right, right. So, so because I, we 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 played just one tune and then uh, we, I could see people coming out <laughs> and everything. And yeah, yeah. It was at the very start, so. So let me know, so uh, guys, about the sound. If the sound is okay, uh, for people that. Uh, uh, <laughs> that don't know uh, Alexandre Tripoli. He's a, a violin player from Belgium, from Brussels. He um, is probably most well known for being in the Violon de Bruxelles with uh, Cha. Yep. And uh, he's a avid teacher. You taught at several camps last year, right? You taught at Jang and Jun. I actually, I met you for the first time in Jang yeah, and Jun. Yeah, we, we were did. both teaching. Yeah. I was teaching guitar, I think. You were teaching violin. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah, that's yeah. you taught at the Dutch uh, uh, Tim Cliphouse 
uh, yeah camp, I did that right? uh, and also a bunch of other camps in Belgium yeah uh, and you play with you're in the band with Fapi of course yeah right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. he's a uh, he's a very active or well, he was very active because I, I heard you didn't have you don't <laughs> in have my gigs past anymore. life <laughs> I, I, used, don't have any I used to be active <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and I remember being at your house last year was it last year? I think it's more than that, but yeah, yeah something like with, that. With uh, yeah, Dennis, because yeah, yeah. we were recording right. lessons with you for Dennis's DC Music School. Right. And then I discovered that we had lots of things in common. For instance, yeah. you also like mixing and you use the exact same software that I use. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you were not doing the video stuff yet. You started later, but then you also <laughs> use the same uh, video software, which is pretty unusual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually, I started doing those those video Facebook videos, um, par uh, partially because of you, actually. Really? I, I remember you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I you remember thought, oh, I can do that much better than this guy. Exactly. <laughs> 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 I was like, if if he can make it, anybody can. So. <laughs> <laughs> If I can make yeah. <laughs> well, it's kind of true. Because I, kinda, I, kinda <laughs> <laughs> I started. No, but my, I, yeah. Yeah, I remember we, we were discussing about like um, how having a presence in social media right. uh, was so important. And um, and it was like, yeah, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. And in the meantime, I, I, I was organi organizing uh, lots of sessions uh, that, I, that I would record. And I, will, I was like, yeah, I'm just it's just for me, it would be like just buying a camera. Right. Because I already have all the gear to to get really nice sound, and people coming to my house, so it was like. Uh, but if you have yeah. all the gear to get really nice sound, why don't you get a nice sound then? <laughs> <laughs> but that's uh, that, that, that's uh, that's it, why man. I'm use here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> teach me, teach me. <laughs> <laughs> actually, um, you you actually are. I mean, we have been working together in this time. It's pretty funny because you were in three of my uh, collab videos, right? And you were the yeah. first one I actually I approached because I already knew, okay, this guy can get, get can get good sound, <laughs> yeah. right? So, yeah, yeah. So what have you been doing? What have you been up to the last like two weeks, three weeks, maybe? Last last two or three weeks. Um, well, um, so first of all, my, my my girlfriend she she moved in for for the lockdown. Uh, Smart with me, so. There was a lot of um, arranging the house and and that stuff, and um, apart from like wasting time on uh, <laughs> on social media and wondering uh, what's going to happen, like everybody, I guess, uh, I started to practice the bass. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> double bass, double bass. Yeah, I figured. Um, you didn't tell me that. It, I did. Uh, what do you um, mean practice like every day? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got yeah. blisters on your fingers? I do. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's painful. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> did, did you know that I graduated from the university for bass, jazz bass? Oh no. Okay. <laughs> yes, I did. Like double bass? Yeah, or, double or bass. Or I graduated. Oh, really? Wow. I, dra I graduated oh, wow. cum laude actually for double bass. But the thing is, I never enjoyed playing it. But you know, I was in this uh, course, so I like let's finish it. But then right. after I finished <laughs> it, I, I think I played three more gigs and I sold my bass. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? Okay. Yeah, because I didn't enjoy it because I also played violin, of course, and I played bandoneon, and I did that too. Yeah, but, but I was in the bass mm. course, so yeah. Yeah, but the, the vi violin and bass seems to me like a really always appeared to be to be a really bad combinis com combination, like playing those two instruments. And I was like, yeah, this is the time because I, I don't have any gigs. Uh, if if I don't feel in shape with the violin, there's no worries about that. So so that's why I, I, I decided to do that. And also it's a it's also a really great way to pass time. And I could practice the violin too, I guess. But but uh, I'm so used to get my motivation from gigs that I have to play. Yeah, uh, I can see that. From yeah. from yeah, from feeling that I'm that I'm well in shape, that I'm ready to play each day, and if and every day and no there's no point to that so so i i figured yeah ju let's just practice something else and actually yeah, i i think uh, one can get better and at an instrument by practicing another 
because the, there's so many things, basic things that you have to think about again. So what are you saying? Uh, I should learn more instruments? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not saying that to you. But, uh, <laughs> but, but, but yeah. how, but how so are you practicing this? Are, do you have like a book or something? Or how do you get the oh, te no, 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 technique no. and stuff? No, no, no. So, so I, uh, I, I've been around bass players a lot. Uh, one c could say too much. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, as I always and, say, uh, I, I, my friends are all musicians or bass players. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, so, so I think I, I, I have a gr good grasp of, of how one should put his hands on the instrument. I had just a quick, like, two minutes uh, session with a friend to just check my position. And apart from that, I just go with a. Um, uh, just making sure that that I get things as right as possible first the, the, the in the, like uh, like being really concentrated and already uh, and focus a lot on uh, being uh, decontracted uh, how do you say that yeah, uh, relaxed uh, yeah. no yeah relaxed yeah. relaxed no tension so how so many how many hours have you practiced until now you think I, I have no idea I have no idea um, more, I don't, more than, I more don't than keep five hours? track. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, then, <laughs> if it wasn't Corona, you you have so many gigs right now. It's like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. That's a joke, right? You know the joke, right? The, the yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I yeah, know yeah, that yeah, joke, yeah. but but I I I also know the, the the joke that is you know what whenever I practice something when I go to sleep, usually it just turns around, and I had nights where. What I was practicing was actually uh, I was practicing my, my two beat because I discovered that I I really sucked at mm -hmm. playing. Uh, uh, I have tips for that. Two beat. Yeah. <laughs> no, really. And yeah. uh, with a metronome. So uh, at the end, I was just I was just playing like E A E A or something like that. Uh, a E A E. Anyway, and I would be sleeping with just. <laughs> You know, just that most yeah, the yeah. most basic bass line yeah. going around. It's, it's like pretty <laughs> difficult. I, I still remember being at the like my second year studying double bass, and it was the first time I had like band practice because you have always have like these, these ensembles, these bands, right? Right. But there was no drummer, or the drummer couldn't uh -huh. make it that rehearsal, and we were playing a ballad. And I still uh -huh. remember, like after three bars, like cold sweat, like oh, I am actually the only one that's responsible now for playing yeah. a one and a three. But yeah. where is it? Where is that one and yeah, the three? Yeah. And then um, it didn't go that well. But then I remember uh, somebody telling me what you should do is like a drummer. Like when a drummer plays a hi hat, he plays mm -hmm. a, uh, his front foot the hi hat, but then his like his heel is doing mm -hmm. is going down on the other beats. So it's still making a rhythmic movement on the off on the beats he's not playing. So mm -hmm. then I would do ding, and I would make another movement for beat two, even though I wouldn't mm -hmm. be playing something right to mm -hmm. keep the, like this motion going. Uh, so that yeah, was actually a very good tip. And then you shouldn't yeah. be afraid to just play it at the place that you think it is. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. but but when when I my, when I practice that, uh yeah, it's some, something I, I had forgotten about. So so I would record myself at some point just just to check, you know, with the metronome how things were. And I'm like nothing is in place. Yeah. Like it's it's more or less in place, but it's not in place. It's There's also it, this it's delay not, uh, right, between the the moment yeah. you pick the string and the. And uh, it's really strange because yeah. walking bass is much easier for me for some reason, mm. but uh, slow, like slow tempo playing two beat is is really really hard. And and the scariest thing uh, is that when I play when I'm playing, I don't actually notice. It, I, I need to go back, record mm. myself, listen, and then I realize, yeah, of course I am. So yeah, it's still a ongoing process but it, it's really fun so it's then really it's fun. saying that you you, you <laughs> said a e a e but you sang d a d a yeah i know and then I he know. calls you a nerd <laughs> but actually what he did is because he doesn't have a perfect pitch he actually yeah, he went to, to check his, to check on the guitar yeah, to check yeah. so then <laughs> you're the big, biggest nerd here of course right but that, but i don't have perfect pitch no no <laughs> Um, uh, so these uh, these tips no, are about no. recording <laughs> yourself with bass that was not directed to dennis right <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It was just for myself. Okay. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe I, I, I'll do some sort of video where I play the bass, but uh, hopefully I won't because it would mean uh, we lockdown is out and everything is back to normal. 
<laughs> what else have you been doing? So you've been practicing bass. I saw that you made some videos, collab videos with yeah. your girlfriend, right? And yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that. Yeah. And you, I saw that you made had uh, like an announcement on Facebook that you were teaching through Zoom. So you've ah, been yeah, doing course, that yeah, yeah. a bunch. Then I, if I'm thinking, or have been doing it for a while. Or uh, I, I started um, maybe a, a, a few weeks ago uh at first quite slowly because i wanted to, to get familiar with the the technology and the restraints uh, uh, of it uh, and now I, i i've been trying to advertise it a little bit so if there are some violinist uh, players out there um just i guess go check what I play to make sure <laughs> yeah no no <laughs> it's but a yeah, good okay. idea and 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 I have a YouTube channel or you can check my Facebook and and then uh, you can yeah uh, message me or yeah if you're a violin uh, player and you need lessons yeah. then first of course check all the famous players but if they're not available <laughs> 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 no, no go, yeah. go to, to Alex Alex has a very good concept but also of course I know that because I saw you record the videos for Dennis right and you have a very clear way of playing also the lines are very clear and a uh, lot of stuff about timing and like beats and it's very important so yeah yeah i uh, yeah sorry i didn't no no i because I, I, i wanted to ask more about uh zoom teaching because i have found i i don't do it really <laughs> actually mm -hmm. i have a couple of guys that really want me to teach them violin through zoom but right it is i don't know i find it hard to teach to a screen for some reason yeah also because i cannot really play along right mm -hmm. so it's right. more i have done it a couple of times now but uh it is ho it's also very tired uh, i get very tired mm -hmm. so i couldn't imagine like teaching three people in a row but uh, how do you deal yeah. with that yeah i haven't done that uh yet three three people in, in a row um what what i do I, i had to change so much because usually when i teach um I play with the the person, of course, and usually in music camps, uh, there's a bunch of people. So, so the way I approach it is that I I learn everybody or or to accompany on the uh, on the violin, like playing chords, double stops, uh, to get a grasp of the the harmony and of time, because mm. I most of the time I use a metronome, and then I use that as a rhythm section, so to speak. Uh, I give those, the ones accompanying guidelines to try things, to try different, whatever, different chords. And then I, I teach one-on-one, -on -one someone would be playing a solo. Mm -hmm. And then I turn that around. And it's really nice because then people can practice sort of on their own. And then when I, wh when it gets to them, they have a really, really good, um, I mean, the, the harmony is already there because be they've been playing it so much. No, that's, that's really uh, good, that's smart, yeah. So, so, so the structure is really clear for everyone. I don't have to, to go back. Of course, online you can't do that. So what I find myself doing basically is asking, asking the people what, uh, what, like what kind of cash questions they, they might have. And if they don't, uh, usually I, I try to emphasize on uh, methodology and um how to practice so uh, let's say i'm a student because and i'm yeah. going to ask you some questions right yeah okay so um yeah I, i've been playing jazz <laughs> for like three years but i've been doing mainly on my ears right but i understand right. now i've talked to people they told me like i should be more harmonically coherent or like i should they say i should play the chords more where mm -hmm. should i start what should i do okay help oh Yeah. Okay. Well, th then it, it would depend on the on actually the the technique uh, that you would have. Uh, well, let's say I'm a very good violin player. If, it, like it's, um, if you're a really good violin yeah. player, then then uh, straight away I, I would uh, guide you towards playing chords on the violin. Are well, they just like double so stops? You mean like uh, double stops and plugging, like okay. uh, showing you a bunch of positions, uh, explaining the um, what what the functions are. Uh, so what what is what does tonic mean? What does dominant mm -hmm, mean? Mm -hmm. uh, explain to you um, how to memorize a tune, um, how to memorize the harmony, and have a flexible way of memori memorizing 
because I, I think it's important for people to understand that uh, a tune uh, is, isn't fixed. Some players wi will, will play certain changes in some other period that it would be different. So it's nice to have a really broad view of the structure um, and then you zoom in a little bit, you, you can see the function and then you zoom in a little bit, you can see the main core changes that everybody is going to be playing. And then when you zoom in a little bit, you can see the details. What kind of turnaround uh, can I use there? What, what, be, what would be the other options? Uh, and, and so on. Okay, uh, no, no, another question. So okay. Yeah, yeah it's fine. Okay. Um, I, yeah, I really like, I got into jazz violin because I really like uh, this guy called Stuff Smith. And I want to play right. like that. What should I do? Oh, if you want to play like him, I, I guess transcribe. Oh, but yeah, uh, but the people and, told, and told and me that, but I cannot, I can't, uh, I can't hear what he's doing, man. It's so oh, okay. Well, uh, then probably I, I, I would ask that, that person what, what's a nice solo they want to learn mm -hmm. and uh, just try to focus the lesson on maybe two phrases. Okay. So and you and just try to, for them and, and just go, go with them with the process. Okay. Like if I was doing it for myself. And usually when, when those type of things happen, what I do is I, 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 um, I record some material afterwards okay, uh, yeah. because they, they, they have been asking me uh, about something that I didn't know. But usually if, if, if it's that precise, then I know they can send me a video so I can try something and find, you know, uh, little things. But my, my advice there would be... Um, uh, to to really break things into really small pieces, don't try to to approximate stuff Smith in one go. Just just pick one thing that okay. you really like. Maybe the vibrato. Maybe an effect. <laughs> the vibrato. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the vibrato. The vibrato. <laughs> you don't say vibrato. You, you said something completely <laughs> different. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, it's something completely okay. different also. And I don't want to. <laughs> okay. I don't want YouTube to block my videos. So what are you doing? Okay. Uh, let's let's edit that out. <laughs> We're not live, right? <laughs> so um, so something yeah something really small, and then you 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 try to understand that, and then you uh, you add another break. It's 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 um, it's really important to to break up things in really really small pieces because you can d digest them. It's the same things when 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 you want to to learn phrases. I think sometimes sometimes you like a phrase, but it's only because of one little approach. Mm -hmm. And if you if if you can isolate that little element, then it's so easy to transpose it and to actually incorporate it in your playing uh, really quickly. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So now that last question. Uh, yeah, I've been playing, you know, I understand all the theory. I don't know why that happens. It rarely happens with violin players, but let's say, <laughs> <laughs> let's say I come from, I don't know, I come from gu rhythm guitar or something, I don't know. Oh, yeah, and, okay. uh, but yeah, but it doesn't swing, you know, it does, it, I can hear myself and it doesn't swing. And when uh, you play or when I hear like Corpelli play or Star Smith, it swings and I, I've tried to do it, but I don't know how to get it. Okay. Well, then I, I, I would give the, the basics of uh, bowing. And usually for timing issues, I, I, what, can, what I can do is record that person playing on the background and then we listen it, to it back. And maybe I would pick some, some phrase that, that that person has, has been playing and, and uh, see what we can do to, to, to actually make it swing. Usually people who complain who can't swing, they want to swing too much. Okay. So so they they would have really uneven. It's so common with violinists. They they would do something like pa ta ga ta da ta da ta da ta da, which isn't swing, right? And um, it's just that they have something in their head, and the way for them to emulate it is 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 wrong. So sometimes just just the fact of recording themselves and then hearing themselves are like, oh, I'm doing that, okay. So I would get from there and uh, usually it's try trying to get them to play even, but with the right bowing so that the, the right notes are stressed. But it's, it's and, funny that you say that. And with the really, really, uh, really strict sense of rhythm. I don't agree about the mm -hmm. bowing at all. 
Uh, I okay. used to think that too, right? Like bowling, very important. Okay. But then I started like looking around to the different violin players. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, you, you like to mm -hmm. play a lot of separate bows, right? That's yeah, part yeah, of your I do. style. Yeah. Yeah. But there's other violin players like uh, Gopelli who actually slurs a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you had even people like Sven Asmussen who would play four bo uh, notes under one bow, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they yeah. all swing. Yeah. Right? So then I discovered, okay, it's not about the bowing. But when I say bowing, it's not about the slurs. It's about the the, the, the stress you can put on certain uh, notes. Okay. And be okay. really consistent with that. And Being able to, to, to like emphasize uh, uh, syncopes or, right. or uh, yeah. That's yeah, I wouldn't call that bowing. I would I would call that like accenting the right notes yeah, yeah, or yeah, yeah. maybe phrase. That, that's what I like meant with, with, with bowing. Okay. So it, it it means a really great con control of the bow because you you're you're putting lots of different accents all the time, but yet you want to maintain a really steady tempo, and uh, you want things to be even. You want you want things to be consistent do you have really a reason uh, i like it but do you have a reason to have the separate bowing style and there's more uh, people that, like Vati rosenberg do you know him uh, no the no. rosenberg family he's a great violin player uh, he's not very uh, well known because he doesn't play that much but um okay. he's great and he also he was the first one that i saw oh man he's playing all separate bowings and swings so hard so mm -hmm. is there a reason why you do this separate because the reason he does a separate bowing because mm -hmm. I asked him, of course, uh, but he's not really aware of it. But he told me, like, his only influences around him, apart from his father, who was also a violin player, was actually like Stocholo. And and that's the way it sounds on the guitar, like tick, 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 And that's how you can ah, get yeah, it. Right? Right. So I was wondering yeah. what your reason is. Um, I don't know. I, 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 do, I, I do slurs. Of course. Uh, yeah. uh, it depends on the tempo. I, I guess uh, it, it's probably a jazz influence. I guess I think I was I was doing more slur more slurring uh, before uh, meeting him, and also yeah, to me, true. to me when when I I like to 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 have some bebop elements in my in my playing. Bebop is really the the like the jazz that appeals maybe maybe the most to me. It's okay. a, it's kind of stupid to d to say that because I I I, I love uh, a lot of genres, but but. Um, and me it's too. easy for I, me I'm to with you. I'm with you. to <laughs> to imagine a trumpet. Yeah. So so the for me to it, it like to yeah to make the transition for uh, from the records that I really love like R Clifford Brown and and uh, it's easier to for me to emulate a trumpet than a saxophone player. Right. Uh, I, when I when I try to to play a Charlie Parker solo. Um, I haven't done that in a in a long time, actually. But I I, I did at a certain point. It's really really hard to to keep uh, the violin elegant, and I and I really do believe that having a really elegant, beautiful, aesthetic sound on the violin um, is something that I wa that I want to keep. It, it's not it's not that you you have to do it because Tuff Smith uh, is not emph emphasizing that aspect no. of the instrument but he has and a warm does sound great he has a very warm sound but it's yeah yeah right but 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 you see what i what i mean there's, yes. there's a big difference in, in in him and versus grappelli for example so to me my, my style is more on the on the like french you know uh romantic yeah uh type of style so yeah yeah, but you're right about Cha with the several. Yeah, Cha does that too. But I, I yep. think from, from with him it comes probably from the Eastern European influences in his playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which has a lot of this separate. Certainly, volume, right? yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Because uh, so we talked a little bit about uh, some topics that you wanted to address, and uh, you had this thing about an unpopular opinion. Ah, yeah. About <laughs> about <laughs> talent versus what was it? Talent versus no, no. practicing I didn't hours, want right? you to to quote that. <laughs> no, why not? It no, was the, I mean. it was the private note. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay, no, no. Sorry. It's it's uh, uh, no, no. Out. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, what so, is your I what is your unpop what is your unpopular opinion about? Uh, it's like not really unpopular, but but a lot of the time when when uh, people uh, talk about great musicians, it's. Uh, it's always about oh yeah, look at how much talent he has. He's so talented, and to me, uh, for example, I, having been close to Cha, uh, I mean, 
he's really nice, so he's not going to get upset. But I find that really unfair. Because it's not talent, it's a lot of work. <laughs> You mean like when people say to him talent? What do you mean? Yeah, when when yeah. people uh, would say to or, or any great musician like oh, he's so talented, like if he was born that way, you know, it's like that two set uh, violin, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, joke. Uh, please, genius, please don't genius mention genius any other YouTube channels on my. Uh, yeah, sorry, <laughs> 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 sorry, geniuses are born, right? Um, and and I find that. Uh, it, it's it's fine for those great musicians. It's fine, right? But but it it can be really um, it it can lead people to believe that they 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 will never be able to play uh, in a nice way. But that's the funny it, thing. It can be I, really I, discouraging. I I, th- I feel the same way. But actually, I, it's more. Uh, I think it's also unfair even to the musician themselves yeah. because it kind of bypasses all the hard work they did. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So that that would be one. Uh, and uh, and the other one uh, um, is also that sometimes people would say, yeah, the only thing you need to do to be great is practice, like uh, 32 hours a day. Or, or 40 something hours like a day, two sets violin, then. Yeah, yeah 40, 40 hours a day. <laughs> but for jazz, 32 is enough because you, d- you don't have to be a virtuoso. So you don't have to play in tune. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so and, and I, think, I think that's really uh, inaccurate as well. Uh, and the proof I have for that is actually people like Cha or you, like multi-instrumentalists, that actually can master more than one instrument. Because if you do the math, it's not feasible, because there are not uh, enough hours in a day to do it. So what's what's the... And, and actually, a lot of great musicians are multi-instrumentalists. Multi-instrumental- yeah, but uh, you play triangle, uh, triangle, right? And violin. I do, triangle, yeah, yeah. Right? And but uh, I, I, I keep Zaz- my triangle practice to, to five hours. Kazoo, I think you play Kazoo player. It seems to me that we, we don't need trolls in the chat here. You, you, you're doing all that. You, you guys can leave it. It's fine. <laughs> no, but go, so, on, go, so, on, go on, So, so I think, I think um, no one inf- emphasizes uh, how much important uh, the methodology and the seriousness seriousness of practicing and uh, so it's all vague to say that but I'll be really precise um, so when you learn an, ext- an instrument the type of memory you use is called proce- procedural memory so basically it's the memory you would use to learn how to, to drive a bike or uh, to ride a bike or drive a car Mm-hmm. So you can talk to your friend wi- while while uh, being on your bike. You don't have to think about what your legs are doing. You don't have to think about it. Um, how did you learn that? Through repetition. And actually, uh, it's it's like it's a memory that doesn't really um, filters stuff. So. Uh, it's good to practice a lot, but if you repeat bad stuff, you will never get there. And actually, when you realize later that you should have been doing things otherwise, or this note was out of tune in your piece, or you actually wasted time a lot. So uh, knowing that and uh, be really, really strict when you practice uh, and reach for perfection when you practice, as opposed to reach for perfection when you play for people, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because that's the only time uh, as a musician that you you shouldn't think about what's being going wrong. Uh, you, you you shouldn't think about perfection, getting it right. You should enjoy yourself because if you enjoy yourself, people will see it, right. and that's that's what they want to see. They don't they, they yeah. don't care about a perfect uh, interpretation. So I think yeah, it's it's a. Um, a lot of people, maybe younger people, uh, I've noticed they practice a lot, but actually they don't practice seriously. They sort of play, but it's, it's in the practice room, so it's not a big deal. So they're not really reaching for perfection. They learn bad things. But you and need a good teacher for that, right? So in the beginning, sorry? you would need a very good teacher to teach you all these things, because how are you going to be yeah. able to reach perfection yeah. if you don't know what... 
what it is that you're yeah. doing wrong. And so and so 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 uh, so there's a methodology to 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 be sure. Y sure, with a teacher it'd be easier. But uh, like for playing uh, intonation, you can play with a drone, with a tampura. Yeah. It will be really hard for you to play out of tune with that thing because basically it's an Indian sound that gives you all of the, those harmonics. Yeah. So that's one way to make sure that even if you can't keep up with the concentration or may maybe you can't hear exactly where the note should be, you have, s you, you, you have um, that help. Or, or that would be the metronome for timing. Or maybe s both at the same time. Uh, and And... There are tricks to actually make sure that when you repeat stuff, you get it right, uh, and you get it right, and you get it right, and you get it right. And actually, it, it has been proven that uh, what uh, what really uh, the ratio between uh, trials, uh, like success of a trial, is the defining factor on how to 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 learn something using that memory that we use so they they they, they have done a study where they they would have uh, like a hundred people and they have to learn like 12 bars on the piano by heart they can practice as much as they as they want and they have to come back the next day and play it for the jury and uh it's not the the ones who practice the the longest that do well it's the one that didn't play a single mistake mm. uh, when they were lear learning the piece. So they would take look at take a look at the paper, figure out how oh, okay we are in this tonality. Oh, that rhythm is strange. Okay. Oh, is that oh it's not going? Tech tech tech. Okay. Okay, I get the rhythm. Okay. What about the figuring? What should I do? Then first time they play it, it's really slow, but it's already everything's there. Yep. Rhythm is perfect. And second time is a bit faster. They played 20 times. It took uh, 20 minutes. They leave the room. Next day, it's perfect. Yeah. But how, how are you going to translate this to jazz, though? I mean, I understand how this works for yeah, classical so, music, so but for jazz. So f f to jazz, to, tra to, to translate that to jazz is tricky, indeed. And that's why you have to, to in my opinion, uh, actually, it's not my opinion. There's a, a video. I, I, I will send you the link. It's a Bilevance interview so don't take my word for it <laughs> it's relevant guys uh, who's saying you should really avoid to make an approximation of the whole thing you have to cut things in in bits so small then actually you can uh break them it's like uh, little bricks little right. bricks by little bricks so 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 keep it keeping it um realize that the problem is enormous and break it in really, 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 really small pieces and go at them one at a time, really slowly, uh, making sure that you get things right as soon as possible. Yep. Then when it's right, you repeat. And if you do that, you, 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 you can learn so much faster. Uh, and, and that's so much more important than, pr than practicing it eight hours, uh, hours a day. So how long, like, how long have you been doing it that way then? Because I assume uh, that you didn't do this as a kid, no, you know? no, oh. no, no, no. I didn't. I realized that quite lately, and I changed my technique. Uh, I, I I gave up the shoulder rests, and um, yeah. <laughs> so so yeah, I, I would like to to, to hear actually. You, you, uh, but you you did a video about that. Uh, yeah, ma'am, a video about the shoulder um, So a bunch of, of things came together in my life uh, at the same time that made me realize those things and actually just giving up the shoulder rest m meant i had to change my technique and i realized those same things at the at the same time so so it was a big ah uh, moment for me because yeah. suddenly i could do things like uh that i thought i i would never be able to to do actually and i was like oh oh man if i had known that when i was 12 or 20 or or 25 maybe so imagine you have a so teacher that yeah. would have taught you that when you were 12 right so that's yeah probably, that's probably the good yeah. teachers right i mean that's what <laughs> i'm saying if you have a good teacher that understands how to how to um get that idea across because i agree with everything you said but how to get mm -hmm. that idea across to young children that that's mm -hmm. very uh, valuable right to uh, me, it's from the so beginning, valuable yeah. but to it can me, also of course be a bit boring 
because I yeah. can imagine, oh yeah, I want just want to play this minor string, right? It's like no, no, we're gonna just focus on A minor and let's play this. What are you playing now? Let's okay, let's make it smaller. That's like that's the first four notes you were playing. Let's get the timing right. That can be mm. quite a, a boring, seem boring. I mean, especially if you were just if you don't actually intend to be a professional musician or just it's for, it's for fun, you know. Yeah, uh, this mo that's why I don't think it's necessarily bad that you discovered it later, because at that point you actually had the motivation to do it like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, maybe, 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 but I, I think, but I, 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 I'm not sure it's boring. But then again, I should, yeah, I, should no, I don't find it boring. That, but uh, I could see that, that people would think. Yeah, it's boring, yeah, okay, yeah. I, okay, but it's a good point, and and also I, I, I should, I should be precise here, and of course, if we're talking about methodology. Uh, if you want to think on uh, what method you want to employ, of course your goal is really important. So if your goal is just to have fun on Sundays and play with friends and drink some beer, and you you don't mind to just stay at the same level for for it, 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 of course don't do that. It's 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 a. Uh, but most people that I, that I see really want to get better, and they don't have much time either because they, they have a job they have a family and uh it's not it's not that you would have to do that for so long in the end you know if you if you if you have one hour and you split it in two and just half an hour is practicing like i meant to and then the other half hour is just playing like if there were some people putting on a back back in track a metronome and just enjoy yourself or play with someone or whatever um it's fine too you don't have to do it for four hours, but but if you if you, it's it's like a muscle when when you get get the habit of doing that uh, really methodical way of learning, it's not it's not that boring actually because you 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 get better so so much quicker than actually you want more. So right, I understand. So what's your yeah. opinion on? Um, do you have do you have an unpopular opinion on <laughs> the value of learning music theory? Ah, oh. um, usually I, I it depends on, on, on what you mean by learning because oh, let's say let's say I'm I'm a classical violin player right and I come to your lesson and uh, mm -hmm. and then I say t I come and uh, we talk about the song I say yeah but I hear people talk about altered scale what is it would you then mm -hmm. encourage learning that or would you say no 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 that's that's not important right now I mean what is mm -hmm. your view on that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. My my view on that is that uh, usually um, there's a separation in music theory between uh, things that are there only because of uh, communication and things that are really meant to be understood. For example, the way we notate chord isn't logical, but it's really practical because you you just see three symbols. And you have uh, uh, a chord that has six, that, that has six notes. Th it's the only reason it's 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 uh, written that way. Uh, when when you talk about um, uh, altered scale, it's the same thing. You say altered scale, and y you've described to me seven notes in two words. Mm -hmm. It's really practical. Uh, but, you, okay. but 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 does that mean that knowing that scale is going to e enable you to play? that color is a just a totally different thing because if you want to play that color you have to pick one note like flat nine and find ways to resolve it okay good i i know and, and you, you 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 haven't touched the scale yet right then you pick another note and you find ways to 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 resolve it in major in minor and then you say, okay, I can I, I can combine uh, combine them, and then eventually you'll get the all the tensions. But but just trying to play that color just by playing that scale is just. So you wouldn't do it the other way around, then. Like let's say I I'm coming to you and I say I wanna, what can I play on this A7? You wouldn't you would never say to me. Well, you could actually use the altered scale. You would never say that, right? I um I would. By because I want to communicate in a fast way. But I don't, know what, I don't know what it is. I don't. I don't know what the altered scale is. So would you oh, or if you don't know so it. So yeah, now I'm I just. I don't know anything. I just say okay, I want to play A7. I, I, then I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't talk about that okay. because if you don't know anything, I would be talking about uh, 
what is uh, the relationship between A7 and D minor, uh, where does goes uh, C sharp, how, how does it resolve? Because if you don't get that, how are you going to get the rest, right? So, so I want to make sure that you understand what, what uh, voice leading is and you can actually play those those voices like the, the so the root the third and the seventh on your instrument uh, in all sort of way and you you can really hear it and then uh, okay you could play now uh, B flat maybe and right. and C you could resolve it that way and then once you have um, so where where would you resolve yeah. the the C sharp then to the the Oh, you, you, you could you could do so that I in so many ways, but uh, <laughs> most of the time, uh, at first, it, it goes to, to D, right? If you go to D minor, but but you could go down to, to B. It, it's, right. it's really nice, too. You know what's uh, nice? Because I, uh, I was thinking about it when you talked. You know what's nice? You could keep no it, Nobody right? does <laughs> that, or not many people do it, to resolve the sharp 9 up to the major 7. So you, s you play a C on A7. And instead of going, with most people would play C, ah, yeah, B yeah. flat, A, but you play C to C sharp. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, actually, yeah. I got it from Stochelow. Stochelow does that a lot. And it's uh, like, well, it's actually not many people do that. That's really uh, nice, yeah. nice sound. I, 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 yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's more bebop, uh, bebop -y thing, but I, I like that. Yeah. I do it. <laughs> and you know what's also uh, good? Uh, nobody does that. Uh, to play the sharp 11 like, on, on altered chords, because nobody does it, but they only play, like, when you play... Um, Take the A train, right? So the second chord mm -hmm. D seven. Everybody will be playing a G sharp, right? Because that's it's even in the, mm -hmm. in the intro. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. and in the melody, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But you can actually also play on uh, G seven. Just play uh, the C sharp, right? It's, you could say it's a tritone, but mm -hmm. um, I think it's uh, underused. Like everybody always goes to the flat nine or the sharp nine, but the sharp eleven is actually a really nice sound to play on altered chords. Because you can be solved mm -hmm. up to the nine of the one chord. I mean, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so so many ways, so many yeah. ways. Actually, but, but yeah. it's funny because I would be talking the same. I never talk about these skills, even though I know them. But I mm -hmm. would also be talking about like notes, right? Like, so, like oh, the, the B flat is really nice to play on A seven. And what you could be playing, then maybe you could play something like, and I would talk about arpeggios. I would say, right. why not yeah. try to play in a, a G minor arpeggio? Right, and then mm -hmm. when you hit the highest D, go down to a C sharp, something something like that. Right, I would I would be yeah, talking yeah. more about arpeggios and not about scales. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's because scales they, they don't really e even uh, we we don't even have to go into uh, altered scale. If even the the the, the major scale, um, that's the it's you don't use the major scale even on on, on the tonic uh, on the tonic per se because you what we you would do is that there are chromatic chromatic ways to make sure basically uh that uh each note that comes on the beat is actually uh, uh well basically that you you don't end up, end up with a, an f on the on right on the beat and 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 well, so depends, what depends. i they, they would be s several ways for me to, to play a C major scale. One that would make it sound dominant, one that would make it sound tonal, etc. etc. So, so how, how do you play a major scale to sound make it sound dominant? Well, just the bebop scale, la, la. but it's not a major da, da, scale, da, yeah, but yeah, okay. I, I would then call that yeah. a mixed linear scale. <laughs> <laughs> with a passing note to the, yeah, to the root. But uh, usually I yeah. don't use modes because okay. it's just it's just confusing. It, no, it's I don't, it's I don't easier for me that, to yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's easier to me to to just say yeah okay th this is the, the the those are the this is the scale so those are the the, the notes that are diatonic, and um, we can treat them to 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 have them sound like it's okay I'm home it's the to uh, it's the tonic chord or it's it's tense things things are tense it's the dominant or i'm i'm preparing something it's subdominant etc etc it's funny because so. uh, one of my most watched videos is actually a video where i just completely <laughs> talk crap about <laughs> modes <laughs> like, it's like stop <laughs> using modes and it, oh, yeah, it, but, but people like that because because it, it doesn't sound vague it's like they, they, a lot of the time, it, it, yeah, they want no, to clickbait. Keeps, I just right. made a clickbait out yeah. like mode suck or something like that. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, just, you, well, it's the same. <laughs> I just made the, my last video is called the best 
Morris Call. The I've best seen the jazz guitar video ever. <laughs> <laughs> A video guitar lesson ever made, you know, <laughs> and then it says in between brackets, it says uh, on the peer list in the Netherlands. Like, it's a kind of a joke. <laughs> and I, I thought about that title for like two minutes because <laughs> I was sitting like, How am I gonna call this thing? Because all the videos are the same, right? Because this is just how to play yeah. a solo on After You've Gone. But if I call yeah. it that, nobody's gonna watch it. Like, only yeah, people yeah, that course, search yeah. for After You've Gone or something. It's like, okay, what is the most ridiculous title I can come up with? Okay, yeah, best video <laughs> ever. <laughs> but that video is doing well. So, well, yeah. and, I, and I immediately <laughs> sent a, a screen cap of my YouTube channel statistics to Dennis. Dennis Chang said, oh, yeah. look, this is the proof that it's, it's only about the title because it's a ridiculous title, but people click on it. Like yeah, they want to yeah, see yeah. like the best chess video ever. Either they click on it because they're curious or they click on it because what this asshole. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and it, it is funny, but it's also kind of, I, I don't want to say it's depressing, but it's also kind of, I don't know, what do you do with that? So I have to call every title, every video has to have a stupid title like that, you know? So yeah, what's the next one going to be? It's like, it's even strange. better video. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I think like uh, titles that, that, are, that are going to infuriate people. Yeah, uh, are the most uh, because it's the, just the way algorithm re recognizes that uh, certain things are going to be controversial, controversials, and uh, and they want that. Th there's nothing better than that. Like people sharing a, vi a video because they love it, and at the same time, other people sharing your video because they absolutely hate it. Right. Yeah. And then you get them fighting <laughs> in the in the comments. It's like it's it's YouTube uh, yeah. dream. So so. Well, <laughs> but the thing, but people said it to me like, oh, I said that I got some comments like, oh, I see that your views are down, right? And that is true. But but my Patreon is up. Mm. So I, I I have my Patreon which is actually mm -hmm. even more important than my YouTube, you could say, of course it especially is, yeah. in these times when there's no gigs. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. So even though my, my videos are getting less views because the lately I haven't been using that many clickbait titles, but mm -hmm. now I see I attract more of the people that actually want to join my Patreon. So it's it's kind of a, I have to, yeah. balan I have to balance those two things. Well, right. yeah, I, I, I think it's, it, it's the best, like fi finding your audience and that actually really like your stuff and and people that don't need the title to be there they just know that uh, they're going to get great content and they're willing to pay for that it's uh so that's a good, uh, good segue yeah. into uh let's talk a little bit about those about videos right oh yeah right video editing and and, and especially what is relevant now is making the collab videos right the collaboration mm -hmm. videos which everybody seems to be doing it now Right? Or, yeah. or lots of people, uh, mm -hmm. which is, it, it's funny because it wasn't really happening. I can't think of any collab video like that, like we see now with people playing yeah. at home yeah. before this happened. Do you, can, do you, can you recall one? Uh, yeah, the, the was, there was a few, like they, the, but I don't remember what it was. I, I think it was a reggae tune or something like that. And they would have, uh, so you wouldn't see the, the 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 squares in the in the video, but they would they would build this tune with uh, one guy playing uh, yeah, but that's playing not the same. drums in, in in Brazil and somebody oh, okay. in Norway okay, okay. and and yeah, that's but that's, it's yeah. Th yeah. but it it was just the angle they took to to make it uh, special. Well, no. Uh, so how did you get the idea? Really. How, how did you? Because how many did you make? Make two or something, right? Like for from uh, you for yourself. Did I make two? Uh, I don't even remember. Or you make uh, one? You make one, but you made a one with like twenty eight people or something. So honestly, I I I I've, uh, I had some more. I don't even remember. I I, I had some more, but but uh, I I was a bit uh, like I. I like doing those videos, but it makes me sad at the same time because it puts it puts so much in 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 emphasis. I don't know which one is it trying to say now. Um, <laughs> you, ca you can see emphasis some emphasis. emphasis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I was worried about my words again. Uh, emphasis uh, on. Um, and truly what what's ma what is so special about music like 
you can't really describe the interaction uh, between people the fact the fact to be aware of everybody at the same time right. the, the 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 fact that we all experience the same thing we are really much very much in the present and so somebody is improvising and you are company and you listen to him and everybody's reacting to each other and and stuff happens and dynamics and all of that and when you're left with a click track it's it's uh yeah a- at the end i i f- I had some more and I, I just didn't even put them out there. Also, everybody was doing it. And, yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. I, I found it more, more fun to just collaborate after the first some one, others. After the first videos. one we made, somebody uh, sent a message like, yeah, um, like the Dutch, the, the biggest Dutch newspaper or one of the most highly regarded one, it's called NRC, NRC. Like they might want to do an interview with you. <laughs> and <laughs> then a week passed and they said, no, no, because... Uh, it was new like a week ago but now that it's, yeah, it's yeah. all over youtube it's too late there's no no news yeah, yeah. relevance and in it anymore but, but i really i really like making them but but it, ma- it makes me think too much about about how it used to be because I, I i did some videos before but basically it would be just me inviting yeah. people I friends and my yeah. place putting a camera of course some yeah. mics and then oh that was nice to so say okay let's put it online and and uh but it was I- it's uh, i mean i'm looking to to do some more but i i i just gave it a, a little pause because uh, i i yeah i also think that it's a bit i i don't want to get political here maybe but but in belgium they're talking about th- they have opened really big like I- ikeas Mm-hmm. Uh, they're talking about uh, opening up uh, flights and things like that. And for music, theater, what have you, it's just yeah, no, we we won't do that until September, it's maybe not October. Only in maybe that's, that's worldwide. That, that's and it's worldwide. it's like it's like okay, but I I mean, wh- what are we supposed to do? Like uh, pl- play play our instruments in in IKEA's? I mean, what's the <laughs> difference in the end? <laughs> When you look at a plane and a, a, a small, uh, and it's going to be summer, so 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 it's not like you can't actually play music for people and them to be totally safe. If you're outside and everybody's responsible, everybody has a mask, blah blah blah. Uh, everybody has its own cup. I mean, there are ways to do that. And and I was at a certain point maybe thinking, but maybe people don't miss that as much as they miss taking a plane or taking something because it's all there in the internet. Right. So they, they, they want to laugh, they want to watch a show, they have Netflix, they have YouTube, they have comedy artists, they have full concerts. But it has been and like that for a long time, right? I mean, it's not new. Yeah, I mean, yeah it's not new, I, that's true. I remember the time when I was but doing big theater tours mm-hmm. and then the, the halls would be filled. Mm-hmm with famous groups even and then like uh two years later it's like half filled mm-hmm. and then because it's just people didn't go out to theaters anymore and to be honest i didn't really go out to theaters also that much because i was watching most of my music yep. also on on youtube right yep. it's just the way it is it's yeah. very convenient yeah so it's, it's funny that you mentioned that because i i thought to myself in these days that i uh, when when we're back uh i i'll go to to theater actually yeah, yeah, I, I did it sometimes, but let's say yeah. maybe three times a year, which is nothing. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I would go more often to IKEA, and if I don't hate, I don't like IKEA. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I needed to like exactly. a little thing, you know. So yeah, um, but I, I didn't want to be negative, right? I really love uh, the, the 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 videos. It's re- it's really nice. It's just that the the process is so um, no, no. So it, I understand it. I understand that, it. But uh, the thing that I. Th- worried about more more than the theaters even though i understand the theaters it's more like festivals uh mm-hmm. like the th- that is actually the the one place that is something you cannot get on the internet yeah right the atmosphere of the festival yeah, yeah. and uh the big stages and the small stages yeah. and the people jamming especially when we talk yeah. about like jazz yeah. festivals or festivals. Yeah, of course yeah, yeah, yeah that kind of thing you cannot get on the internet no nope. And the theater thing, it wasn't working any way anymore, right? The big concert halls, they were working, still kind of working, but they were like fa- only if famous orchestras were playing, like the Concertgebouw Orchestra or, or the Vienna or something. So it, I think it was already moving to either like big festivals to see big artists 
mm-hmm. or like small clubs, mm-hmm. right? So not the theater, but the club where you could also have a drink, meet some friends, and oh, there was this great Hammond trio playing. Mm-hmm. And those things are also not coming back. Yeah. And that is more worrisome for me. I mean, I, I understand the thing about the theaters. It is really bad. But the, the other yeah. thing is like the small clubs, because yeah. how, how is that going to happen, right? Uh, yeah. Those clubs didn't make any money for the last two months anyway. Yeah. So yeah. Are, are they now also going to pay musicians? <laughs> I, it, it seems like a... Yeah. So th- that, that is more worrisome to me than yeah. the theater thing. But yeah. to get back to the videos. Yeah. Uh, I, I understand completely what you're saying. I wanted to say something about that you said that you missed the it's very difficult um, to get the feel of playing together because yeah. now you're with the click. But I yeah. think I solved that by making <laughs> clicks <laughs> that, that click yeah. like humans, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's true. That you, 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 did, you did a really good job with yeah, that. Yeah, of like course, uh, it's very difficult for the musician to play with a click. I, I can yeah. understand that. And sometimes it's you, have, nightsma- you have to do it again and, and it's like it was not good. And, <laughs> right? So... But but the end result is that it pretty much sounds like we're playing together. I mean, there's so I got so yeah. many messages from people say, "How did you do this? What software did you use to play it together?" Because yeah, it yeah. sounded so much like we're playing together. So, of course, when you're yeah. recording alone with that click, it's not a happy time. <laughs> 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 I know that. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. I know that. It's a, it's so strange. But but it's it's really interesting too. But but there's that thing with timing is that you you you, you it's impossible even. If everybody is playing with a click, and I, I think you agree with that, I think we, we, we have talked about it. Like people will have different ways to interpret where the the where they, they position themselves uh, comparing to the click. Yep. People sometimes will have uh, uh, audio devices that are poorly set up, so right. they they will have big latencies. Yes, and basically. Uh, everybody that's been in the business of uh, mixing or, or editing those videos knows that you have to move stuff around yeah. so much and that's why in the end I prefer to to collaborate with some other people because I don't get to see how the sausage is made yeah, yeah. because at certain point when, when you, you get the, 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 the um, and great musicians great musicians with great timing I'm not talking about uh, uh when you have to put things together, you have you have to shift the tracks and and be like, oh, okay, uh, because you can't be sure of. Uh, now my solution, I, it's true, and uh, but I had many more problems with that in the beginning. So mm-hmm. what I do now is I look at the arrangement and I see, okay, this person has a very big responsibility in making the time for the rest of the band. Right. right? Yeah. So for instance, for um, so we we the last track we did was Young and Hard, right? Yeah, but yeah. we did, uh, before that, we did uh, Paper Moon. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Paper Moon, I first sent to the piano player. Because I was thinking, okay, this guy plays the whole time. But mm-hmm. it was not smart. Because it's improvised, mm-hmm. right? And it's like fills. Mm-hmm. And then I sent it to him. And I got the track back. I said, wow, this sounds great. But then mm-hmm. I sent it to the drummer. <laughs> I, no, <laughs> I, sent it to, I sent it to them the, the, the same backing them at the same time so on the backing like was, and drums. was a click and mm-hmm. i programmed a, a midi bass right so that's mm-hmm. just something so people know where they are and later on there will be a real bass so both the guitar uh, the piano player and the drummer played with that track they sent them to me separately and uh, <laughs> <laughs> on their own they sounded great but together yeah. it sounded like they, <laughs> they were playing a different song or something yeah, yeah, yeah. so i had to uh, shift a lot of stuff right uh, yeah to make it yeah. work that yeah. actually took me hours. Yeah, but then yeah, for yeah, the yeah. last track, I was like, okay, I'm not going to make that mistake again. Yeah. I'm first going to send it to the drummer. Yeah. Wait till he sends it back to me. And then I'm going to send it. And then to the bass. I yeah. didn't have to shove. Now, the de- bass always lasts because I always have that MIDI bass on the on the. Ah, yeah, right. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. But then I sent it to the uh, piano player. And it was almost perfect. Right? Maybe I had to yeah, use, yeah, like yeah. two th- little things I had to shift, but it was more like a kind of interpretation. But not like every bar. So yeah, yeah. Th- that is the solution. And right now we're doing a uh, very complicated uh, Pugliese. Do you know Pugliese? The tango? Yeah. 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 It's very complicated because th- there's every bar is a different tempo almost. But so what I did is I, I programmed this uh, 
bass, and I sent it first to the piano player, instead of sending this to all the bandoneon players, because there's three bandoneon players, I know it's going to be horrendous, I sent it to the piano player, she did a really good job, and then I recorded my bandoneon on that piano. Oh, so it's tango, I, I yes, misunderstood tango. what you, oh yeah, okay, okay, sorry. So I, I recorded my bandoneon on the piano, and now that is track is going out to the other bandoneon players and the violin players. So all the, the essential information about timing is already on the track, and I know now that, okay, I have to shift some stuff, but it's not going to be hours and hours and hours. Right, so <laughs> right. that yeah, is one yeah. solution. But of course, for the piano player, it was not fun. No, she was calling me like, "This is this is terrible. I, I, I can't yeah, do yeah. this." You know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right. You're right. It takes a little bit uh, the fun of. I mean, it's fun to see the end result, right? It's mm -hmm. really fun to see the video, yeah. right? Because the yeah. Young at Heart video, I have to say, from all the videos until that, I think it's the best one. Just it it sounds the best. Uh, the playing is the nicest. Of course, Gizmo is singing great. Mm -hmm. uh, the arrangement is super. I mean, it's not my. I mean, I I orchestrated it, but the original yeah. arrangement is right. Nelson Riddle. Yeah. Uh, but I think also the reason for that is, or what I, the point I wanted to make is, it's really fun to see the end product. Mm -hmm. But doing the whole process of recording it is not as fun as playing it if you would exactly. be playing it. Yeah. And exactly that that yeah. is that is true yeah right but it, it's also fun to to actually realize how much stuff happens in the instant because yeah. when you you have to deconstruct everything and think of who's going to get the click track first and who will be the first to and blah 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 and then i should go to this one and then ah oh yeah but of course but if he plays that voice so i all of that, like, uh, because th there's intonation too, right? Yeah. Uh, intonation, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a mystery too, because. Uh, yeah, I but mean, you remember that? You remember the so the first track we did, uh, where you, you were also on the track was "Where Are You," right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was it was the same string quartet. It was Luen, Holmesy, mm -hmm. first violin. Mm -hmm. You were back then. You were playing second violin and viola, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Evgeny was playing cello. But mm -hmm. then I sent you all the same track. So mm -hmm. when I get yeah. the Wentz track and your track, it's like it was both beautiful, but oh my god, the timing was so different because yeah, 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 the yeah. string quartet it's all about phrasing, right, and being yeah, expressive. Yeah, but there's so yeah, many ways yeah. to be expressive. But yeah. this time, I actually sent you. I had yeah. the Wentz recorded first, so you yeah, could yeah. play on the Wentz track, and now I had to shift almost nothing. There's yeah, a yeah, big yeah. difference, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. if you record but string quartet, you have to actually record the first violin first because they can yeah. determine. They should determine the phrasing. Of yeah. all those lines, but but with intonation, it can be it can be strange too. I yeah. find, like, uh, you can you can think of instances where uh, I mean th this is the classical example, but but say you the string quartet is playing a uh, a C major with a chord with a thick uh, six. Yeah. Uh, you have to to play uh, a tempered third there right. because there's a qu th and if you don't know. If <laughs> you don't know that they would be that that six there, and you you like you're there really really happy with your your perfect third, and it sounds horrible it's once true, you put yeah. things together. So so it's a bit. Uh, I was really scared when when I, you sent me back the Luan tra track with that because I had recorded the viola and second violin, and. Uh, I I didn't know. I I was like, it's totally possible that I uh, that, that I'm going to be totally off with yeah. that thing. And actually, it was okay. But it um, was okay. Uh, mainly, of course. <laughs> but there is of course mixing tricks. Sometimes yeah. when a chord is not in tune, you can solve a lot by lowering the volume of certain voices. Mm -hmm, really. Right. So yeah. that that is one thing you can do. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes what what you could also do is look if the chord is somewhere else. And say, like, oh, here it's in tune. Let's take uh, let's yeah, take the yeah, quarter move. Right? Yeah. Uh, that's stuff that you can do, but yeah, in the end, sometimes it's just not in tune. Uh, yeah. yeah. Again, you can you can use mixing tricks to make another element louder, <laughs> bury, yeah, bury, yeah, bury it course, in a yeah. mix, you know, stuff like that. So. But then at the end of the day, when you do that with a with a, a production like that with overdubbing, and you you think back of what it's like to play with people, it's really crazy. Yeah. To be like oh. All that stuff is actually happening, and it's not happening only in my brain. It's hap happening in all those brains yeah, but you're all at the same right? time. You're also rehearsing. And, and 
you're it's, rehearsing, it's and the rehearsing, you, the, the violin player would say, "Listen, this chord's not in tune. Let's guys, let's yeah, tune yeah, it." Yeah, right? of course. So yeah, right. Yeah. But, but 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 if we talk more about jazz, yeah, uh, uh, there's many many instances where you play a tune, and maybe it's the first time you you play it, uh, and you're on stage, and and uh, all that all that stuff is happening all at once, and uh, uh, all at once, and it's not like somebody is leading all, all the time. Its decisions are made uh, a little bit everywhere. So, so, yeah. <laughs> let's see if there's let's see if there's questions. Let me see. Uh, it's mostly Dennis trolling. Uh, <laughs> uh, guys, if you have if you have questions, by the way, then just ask. And the best. Uh, oh, I have even one message here that says "held for review." It's Dennis. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. That that's not gonna be on my channel. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? <laughs> no. He, he, he got it's blocked by the profanity thing. Yes, it's really? it's, it's pro it is wow. you can see it as profanity. <laughs> he, he he was trying to be smart, but no. <laughs> but okay, if you want to have uh, if you have questions, uh, just uh, tag me because then I will definitely see it. If you don't tag me, it's very difficult to scroll because Dennis put like 50 comments. So <laughs> really? <laughs> well, uh, no, how can I see lot, that? But a lot, a lot of comments. Where, where do you have to go to see that? Uh, just if you go to my... Uh, uh, ah, not yeah, 50, okay. but uh, okay, a lot. <laughs> L let's go to the next uh, subject. Uh, oh, Fik Fiktov wants to know what bow hold you use. Ah, what bow? Bow okay. hold, bow hold. Ah, I have no idea. No? I, uh, I, 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 know I would guess you just French. You just Franco-Belgian bow hold. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah that, like that would be my guess. Bec beginner bow hold, I guys. Beginner <laughs> 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 no, because I made this video called uh, Russian Bohold. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got so much shit for that video. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I say in the video, it's just a name. It doesn't mean it comes from Russia. It's just a name that everybody knows. And this, it's a bohold mm -hmm. I use, right? And then I even got some <laughs> Russians. <laughs> 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 like, it's, not, it's not Russian, you know? It's, like, uh, it's just a name, you know? It's like, okay. So uh, it's a Franco-Belgian bow hold. Like most people uh, have a Franco-Belgian bow hold. I think like 99.9% .9 of the... And there's differences. Okay. There's okay. the Galamian variant. And there is, there's all like the Chrysler. I don't know. I don't know those names exactly. But I do know that you have a, like the standard bow hold. Yeah, okay. Um, let's go to the next subject. Because uh, this is it's a joint interest we have. We talked about that a lot. Yeah. We even use the same software. And it's, it's about mixing. And uh, the, the funny thing is, since I've been making those uh, videos, I've got so many questions uh, yeah. through messages and also comments, uh, uh, mostly through messages. People that wanted to get mixing advice, mm -hmm. um, my advice on plugins, because most people didn't think it was possible to make a collab video sound that good. If yeah. you think it sounds good, right? But most people think it sounds really good. I mean, I even got some really like professional mixers like asking me how the hell I did that, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, even w and then when I told, well, like there's people that recording with a Zoom, you know, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then people thought, but well, how, how did you learn this? But they didn't don't realize that I've been mixing for a long time. Actually, I worked in a studio yeah, yeah. for like years uh, before I actually pl started playing jazz, you know, or or or. Or you know, I was I was just producing recordings for a label. We had this label in the Netherlands called Kuitvat. Uh, it's it's like a store where you buy your uh, what do you call it? You buy deodorant and, and toothpaste and what do you call that kind of store? Like a, uh, I have no idea. I don't know. A beauty but, shop. But they ha they had a record <laughs> label at one point. Okay. And the thing was interesting. Yeah, they, you could buy very cheap CDs and they would produce it very cheaply. So of course they would come to me. You know? <laughs> because they would offer Cheapest me some money guy, yeah. and they would never pay me but i still i keep making this <laughs> but the thing is the thing i learned from that is to make to make cds on a very low budget but make them sound good enough for them to be happy with it yeah so yeah. i i always call that guerrilla mixing right it's like uh <laughs> it's like mixing tricks you know so i i yeah, yeah. I, and that was a long time ago. Then I didn't do anything with it. So, for instance, for my videos on YouTube, I don't. I use this microphone, and mm -hmm. I don't mix this microphone. It's just I just normalize mm -hmm. it to get it to right. a certain level. That's it. Yeah, yeah. But then for this collab videos, I started mixing seriously again, 
Mm-hmm. And then people are like, oh, uh, mm-hmm. are you are you hiring someone to do this? No, no, I was using uh, mixing, uh, just my mixing knowledge I had from the past. So, and I people ask me, and let's talk about the first, like which DAW are you using? Like digital audio workstation, right? Most yeah, people uh, assumed I was lo- using Logic. I, yeah, yeah, it's a common one. Yeah. Not knowing that I am an anti, anti-Mac guy. <laughs> So, and so, logic so, is only so for anyway. Mac, so I cannot yeah, use yeah. logic. So I started way back on Pro Tools because it was the only thing that it was only Pro Tools. Uh, there was Cubase, of course, but uh, there was not nobody took it seriously for recording music. You had to have Pro Tools. It was very expensive because you had to mm-hmm. buy the Pro Tools hardware. So yeah, the yeah. moment I could get away from Pro Tools, I did it, and I went to the program we both use. Right, and and I want to know why you are using it, and it's it's called Reaper, and uh, I Reaper, think if you want to yeah. buy it, it's sixty dollars, sixty euros. Yeah, it's uh, sixty dollars or eighty. I don't remember. It, it is nothing, for what yeah. you're getting, it's nothing because you can do yeah. way more with Reaper than you can do with Pro Tools. So, yeah. so why why are you using Reaper? Well, uh, I guess for that reason. So so at first when I, when I bought my my first um, audio device. Uh, it came with Protus Lite. Mm-hmm. LE, Protus LE. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and shortly. W- what kind of device did you buy to get that? Uh, it was the Mbox. Oh yeah, Mbox. And and um, I didn't know much about anything really. I just wanted to to be able to plug a mic <laughs> in my computer. Um, then I started to learn Pro Tools a little bit. Then I figured that there were some uh, limitation. I think on the number of tracks. Right, sixteen tracks, I think. Yeah. And then I just, um, yeah, I just went with my my basic strategy. Usually, with software, is what is the best open source um, smart program. Uh, and they used to. Maybe ten years ago, those programs were not as good, but uh, eventually now they're, they're really, really good. Uh, like they are actually beating, in my opinion, the the, the so-called professional oh, for uh, sure. stuff for sure. because they, they they have such a strong community of coders. Um, so that was recommended to me uh, by some musician friend. I I, I don't remember, and. And I really liked it because it's it's so it's so stable, it's so yeah. light. Yeah. It's I, I think now like there are at version six and the whole thing is like thirteen megabytes. Yeah, man. It's, it's crazy. It's incredible what and they what they put I, and in they that have program. plugins in there. They have plugins in yeah, there. Yeah, th- there's th- those are not very uh, I mean, good. But <laughs> yeah, okay, but but I mean it, it's 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 crazy. It's it's crazy. Yeah. And and when you see that when you see that they're able to do uh, so that that's three orders of magnitude magnitude lighter than uh, Pro Tools, right? Well, I think it's even more. It's, it's so even, it's even lighter than that. So itself. so it, it it basically means that resources of your uh, of your computer are are, are going to be uh, spared that much. So yeah. Now the thing, of, for so instance, with Reaper, you can both use thirty-two bit plugins and sixty-four bit plugins. I yeah. don't know any. It's getting less and less relevant, of course, but uh, I had a huge collection of 32-bit plugins, but I also had some 64-bit plugins. And mm-hmm. uh, in the past, or in the past, actually, when I wouldn't be using Reaper, I would have to uh, like choose between them or have two separate yeah, yeah, yeah. projects going. So that's one th- little thing with Reaper. But the b- the best thing about Reaper, the best thing, but the o- that makes it also a little bit complicated, is that you can program this yeah. software the way you want it. You yeah, can yeah, program yeah. macros, right? So like yeah. five actions in a row, you can uh, assign it to a hotkey. Yeah, so yeah. when you first get Reaper, um, you, you probably use the hotkeys they use, but they yeah. they program. But then after like three weeks, you discover, hey, I can program. And then you will yeah. spend a lot of time yeah. getting familiar with what you can do. But once you have it, yeah. for instance, you yeah. were at my house right here in this room, right? And yeah, remember, yeah. We were recording something, and you said, "Let yeah. me." And then <laughs> nothing was working the way. No, no, nothing. yeah, because yeah. I changed but everything, right? And yeah. you changed everything too, probably. So, but but they also have skins. So so yeah. if you if you want to have your project be be handled by someone who's working on Pro Tools, 
you can just I never I've never done it because I I, I didn't I, I've never learned Pro Tools really. But uh, you can just put that skin yeah. on and everything is going to be uh, the same. So, Almost so the, the guy, same, yeah. I, it's like as far as shortcuts and 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 yeah. behavior. Uh, if my understanding is correct. Well, there's like one there's uh, one little thing that Pro Tools does uh, that is not available in Reaper that I found. And I, I have a, I have a workaround for it, but it's not the, it's not the same. In Pro Tools, you can actually, I, there's a, I forgot the name, but you can put one of your tracks on the screen. So you can say, mm -hmm. I just want to see the guitar, and then you okay. just see the guitar, really big, okay. right? Okay, uh, I and see. The, you cannot do uh, that yeah. in Reaper. There's no way to do it. So what I, I the okay. workaround is, I have a, a view programmed. If I press Shift Four, if I click on a track name. Mm -hmm. uh, then I will see only that track on the okay, left right. side. Yeah, but yeah, I yeah. cannot move that track around. So in Pro Tools, you can yeah, say, oh, yeah. I want it on the right side. And sometimes that's very handy, yeah. right? So yeah, that yeah. is the one thing I miss from Pro That's the only thing, which is nothing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's nothing. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because if you do double click on a track, it makes it bigger in, uh, anyway. I mean, it's not full screen, but. Uh, no, but it's not the yeah, same. Yeah. It's not floating. Yeah. It's not floating, right? So, okay. Okay. <laughs> you, um, like, you like your tracks to float no <laughs> but <laughs> yeah that's something that you use <laughs> all the time in pro tools really that's something you okay. use all the product because you can check all the plugins very quickly uh, okay. all the sense and it's just i think uh, maybe it's all track highlights something like that i don't know but it's it, i thought that okay. was kind of weird but for mm. once for instance in reaper what's in reaper is uh if you're a classical player for instance uh three point editing is in reaper right there's mm -hmm. somebody wrote a script for that Normally, mm -hmm. you would have to go to a, a very specialized DAW like Sequoia, or mm -hmm. um, that's another one I forgot. Where you that they use for classical music because in classical music they would let's say it's a string quartet, they would mm -hmm. take three takes of the first part, and mm -hmm. then would say, okay, uh, I want to go f the first eight bars of take one, but then mm -hmm. I, I want thirteen bars to take two. Now in mm -hmm. Pro Tools, you would have to select all those tracks, mm -hmm. but in um, in Sequoia, for example, you could just, it's a one button to yeah. put a string. And you can do that in Reaper because there's, there's a script for it, for instance. Yeah, right? you told me that. Uh, so there's, a, there's that. a great community providing all of these things. So for, for anyone that wants to get started making collab videos or just recording, yeah. just go to Reaper. It's cheap. And also the... Yeah. yeah. And it's good. And yeah. also the, the, it's, uh, the, there's a big community, so you'll find all the videos you need to get started and... Uh, it doesn't matter what computer you have. It's it, it th that run. that thing will run. If you can run a browser, then it means. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, and so and people talk about yeah, but does the sound is good? But they all sound the same. So that is the, yeah, the so only program that there's not two DAWs that say they sound different. Uh, one is called Mixbus 32C, and the other one is called Luna. Luna, did you hear about Luna? No. It's like you know Universal Audio, right? Ah, yeah, okay. Well, yeah, the over, yeah, the overpriced I heard about plugin it. company. Yeah. Yeah, 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 <laughs> they yeah, make yeah, very yeah. good plugins. But uh, yeah. you can only use the plugins if you buy their DSP. You have to buy hardware from them, and then you can yeah, use their, right. their really good plugins. But yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And they just came out with a DAW. I don't know why I they saw did that. that. And, I saw um, that. Yeah. Um, it's super. They have a not different sound because they're working together with Neve. And uh, so you can right. use Neve summing. But you know, I can use Neve summing in Reaper too by just using plugins <laughs> from other companies ah, that okay. do the same thing. So it's not uh, like yeah. it's special. But um, yeah, so th th somebody asked me, should I, that wants to start recording, said, uh, somebody told me to use Luna. I was like, Luna? What the hell is Luna? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's very good. It's like, I've never heard of it. Can be good. But then I look it up. It's like, oh, it's new. Just exists for two months. Like, Don't do it. Stick with something that is cheap and uh, do doesn't uh, force you to go into the UA, uh, the UA territory of very expensive <laughs> plugins. Okay, um, so people talk want to know like what's important. What is the first things I have to know when I start mixing? And for me, it's three things. I'm, I'm going to assume you already made recordings, so it's not, we're not going to talk about recordings or microphones because we can mm -hmm. we can talk for hours about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're not going to do that. So you already have the recordings. You just want to start mixing. For me, it boils down to three things, and I want to know your opinion on all three of them. Right. So okay. the most important thing, no, I'm not, that's not the most important thing, but it's, it's the thing that you, as a, as a musician, have the biggest advantage Let's say you have an, a mixing engineer that's not a musician, mm -hmm. and you have a 
mixing engineer that is a musician also, a good musician, then the one advantage that you have as a musician is the part which is called automation. Because that mm -hmm. actually requires you to make musical decisions about the music and you need good ears and musical taste for that. So mm -hmm. that's the first part. And the second part is EQ and compression. Those th are the three uh, elements. Th there's another fourth element which is actually very important, but I, I don't want to talk about which is, is the total harmonic distortion, which is actually very important to get a very pristine pro sound, but, but that, that goes too far. Let's just talk about these three elements. So when you started mixing, were you aware of all of all three of these? Like, how long have you been mixing? Let, let me ask that first. Uh, how long? Uh, probably, uh, probably almost ten years. Okay, maybe, a long maybe time. Maybe eight, something, something like that. Long time. I've been mixing for for twenty years almost. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, where you aw when did you where when did you become aware of let's say automation? It's probably the first thing you, you, you do because you have the fader. I mean, it's not properly automation, right? But it's the, the first thing you, you, you do is like, oh, uh, the voice is too loud or... Yeah, so, or, yeah, okay. Or but that's so only a <laughs> small part of Because automation yeah. is when you... Automate. That's automate, right. yeah. atom, automate certain elements of yeah. your mix. For instance, the volume. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like bar five or six, is the guitar yeah. too loud. Let's... Uh, pull the fader down or nowadays you draw it in right but, you say you but draw I, I, it in, I, yeah. I did I did that really re really shortly because because um, actually pre effects automation so, so yeah. because in Reaper you can you can slice an item you can do it in every and doll, pre effects yeah and, and and uh, say okay that part and you will always get that uh, get that uh, not always but most of the time you, you you'll get that just because of physical reasons Somebody got closer to a mic. Yeah. Somebody played too loud, um, and so you would see the waveform that it's it's much too loud just on that part. And since I didn't want to be doing proper automation, like program programming the the fader to move, yeah, I would just nobody slice. Does that anymore. That's just really. I, like I would I would slice yeah. slice items oh. and 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 just make that part. Uh, so so yeah, it came really. But but you don't have to really slice it, right? You you can just use the pre automation envelope for that, pre FX automation envelope. Uh, yeah, but it. to me it's it's faster to do it that way. But uh, as always, you can do <sighs> yes, so stuff in true, so many but let's ways. Say but you have vocals. because I like to see to see it in the in the in the waveform. Yeah, but you can with pre FX automation envelope, you will see it in the waveform. Ah, right. Okay. B because okay. I understand why you do it with the slicing. Um, mm -hmm. There used to be a time that was the only way to do pre-FX automation in DOS, but nowadays okay. there's envelopes for it. The, th the reason yeah. not to do it by slicing is if you have focals and mm -hmm. that you want to write the vocal, right? So writing the vocal means that you listen to every syllable, and if mm -hmm. one syllable gets gets buried in some element of the track, you mm -hmm. you just raise that syllable. So right. that, that seems for people that have never done it, it seems like ridiculous. Why would you want to mm -hmm. hear? To the to the moon, and why when you hear to the moon, why won't you hear to the? Mm -hmm. Because people are listening to the lyrics. You want people, you want yeah. people to listen to the lyrics to get an emotional um, involvement in the song. So every mm -hmm. word has to be heard. Mm -hmm. So, but you cannot just move all the elements down all the time behind the singer because right. then the music yeah. will suffer. So what you do is you raise those syllables. Now, if you do with slicing, you have to make so m many cuts. Yeah, if right. you use the pre-FX automation envelope, you can actually draw in. Yeah. With b in Reaper, you can do a control and you can draw in, and then you will see actually you will see the words like yeah. become even. So I, I you would can not even slice. Uh, use a plugin that that does that. Uh, yeah, I would not uh, use that plugin. You mean the vocal writer, right? The, the yeah, waste yeah. vocal writer. Don't <laughs> use the yeah, waste yeah. vocal writer, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> There's they have two. Wa they have the the bass writer. Because I was just saying, you as a musician have a big advantage over non well with the vocals is not maybe as uh, relevant because you can just listen to the words mm. but still you want to make those decisions with your ears and not yep. with a yep. plugin that does it for you because yeah, yeah, it yeah. will make decisions that you would never make and um, the automation is something that works directly about what you hear right like really directly right. like oh I can't hear this note right or uh, this violin should make a crescendo right here or something like mm -hmm. that so Mm -hmm. uh, I 
I know these plugins exist and I actually bought one. I bought the, ba the bass rider because I, mm -hmm. I already knew, okay, for vocals, we're never going to use the vocal rider, but for bass, maybe, you know, but then... Bass, I, I like, do use ah. it. Like, for the, the bass rider is, is, is convenient. Yeah, but I can it's do convenient. such a better job with my ears, man. Yeah, of course, but but uh, uh, then again, it, it depends. Are you mixing for uh, just a Facebook video or a, or, or a CD? Uh, no, no, for Facebook video. Uh, let no, don't say you that. You see what I mean? Look it at depends. the project you recorded. Don't yeah, look at what yeah. you're mixing it for. Look what you recorded. Are, did you record yeah. like some like a little thing, or did you record a whole group? And then you want to yeah. do a good job. Right? Yeah, but it depends how much time you have your, on your hands to 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 do that stuff. But I I find the riders if if you keep um the range to a minimal that this doesn't do too much it's fine actually yeah but i mean yeah. I, I like it mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. okay i'm disappointed, <laughs> <laughs> I'm very disappointed. <laughs> actually because somebody somebody sent me a message like two weeks ago i was like yeah um uh, i'm a singer and uh i saw this plugin called waves vocal rider i think i'm gonna buy mm. it and they said i said all caps don't do it <laughs> <laughs> use your ears and, and i'm yeah. not someone to to say that all the time about mixing because there's many things you yeah. can actually use your eyes but for this mm -hmm. no you got to use your ears and especially when you're a musician mm -hmm. because right volume is only one of the things you can automate you can automate so many things what i like mm -hmm. to automate for example is my compressor uh compressor uh, threshold mm -hmm. um for instance when uh the when there is like a, a song where the verse where there's a very uh, mellow verse but there's a very open loud of course yeah, uh, yeah refrain what you call it i don't know what you call it uh chorus Bridge chorus or, yeah, yeah, chorus, yeah lots yeah, of orchestration <laughs> then i want a little bit more compression on that part yeah even after i automate uh, just because yeah. of the sound i want the sound to change and then i would actually automate the threshold for instance right but yeah, and yeah. i would automate I, do that as well. I would automate the eq on the reverb for instance because right. for instance there's a part where there's only Let's say there is an intro with only guitar and vocals or something, or guitar and violin, and then the bass enters, but then halfway the bass drops. Then I would automate the reverb, uh, the EQ on the reverb to have less bass on the part where there is no bass, for instance, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So I would automate mm -hmm. tons of things in the mix, mm -hmm. and so that and for that I use my ears because because I've been listening it's like oh, I don't like the way the reverb sounds here. So I could do two things: I could search for another reverb. But I was liking the reverb on the other part, or I could just automate some part of the reverb, right? So, mm -hmm. so that's automation. Uh, I don't want to do a whole tutorial, but but p if you <laughs> are interested in mixing, just look up automation and look at all the possibilities of automation. Uh, w the most important, mm -hmm. of course, being volume. Okay, let's talk about uh, EQ. What's your? Um, do you have any EQ tips or tricks? Um. Yeah, but uh, I mean, you, you've been going into to, to things that are really detailed there. Uh, so, so maybe just for, for people who, who would be here and, and, and uh, want, want a simple view on that, that whole process. Um, so basically, when you mix, you, 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 there's only two things you can do. You, you can manipulate the gain or you can create an ambience. Yeah. It's really only about that. So um, if we're, we're talking about EQs, we're manipulating the gain, but it will be manipulate dif manipulated differently um, for different frequencies. So EQ, the first step is to, to, uh, to filter out uh, stuff that you don't want. So if you're recording a violin or a guitar, the mic is going to provide you with information in the really low low range and that's just noise and surely if you get rid of it through EQ you won't hear the difference but that stuff adds up really fast and it takes a lot of energy high pass, right? Talking about high pass, uh, right? so I pass yeah. I would help I pass first find the sweet spot so I don't want to mess with the sound here. I just want to get rid of... So I shouldn't be able to 
hear the difference when I A B that stuff. Do unless you have there a, is do a you problem. Have a uh, thoughts about the octaves per uh, decibel per octave? Like you can choose between a six or twelve or twenty four filter. Do you have? Uh, I try to to have it not too sharp, yeah. unless there is a really a big problem like a uh, wind wind in the mic right. if you're outside yeah. or something like that. But I I try to keep it soft. Um, and and then uh, what I, what I would do is just uh, uh, get rid of um, of a uh, so I I would make uh, the EQ uh, quite thin, not too thin, and I would just pass through right the whole spectrum and find uh, frequencies where you can hear artifacts. You can hear suddenly something is re resonating really loudly. Uh, so usually you'd find two or three spots where it's really obvious. Uh, if it's, I guess, if it's a great, great, great recording with great mics and great yeah. stuff, maybe there's none. But I've never, <laughs> I've never I encountered I have that heard case. Those, I've heard those recordings. Yeah. And 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 you chop it off. You chop it off uh, a little bit, and then. Um, well, if you want to do a really quick job, you you you, you can leave it there. Uh, actually, at first, but that would be my, my my first my first thing with EQ. Like for each track, I go through that process. Uh, I think it's really important. And even even though when you A B that stuff, so when you listen with the with the plugin with the EQ and without, you don't hear that much difference. That stuff adds up really 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 fast. Yeah yeah yeah. So. It will make a really, really big difference, um, and uh, and then. Uh, so, what what was the question? Was it no, just so EQ? I was yeah. yeah, your oh thoughts yeah. on EQ. This is very interesting. Uh, so, I, I so totally that's agree. just the, the stuff that I will do, even if I think that the track sounds good, because the the, the uh, it will sound better. So, uh, you want to hear my guerrilla guerrilla <laughs> guerrilla <what>? technique? <laughs> My, yeah. like, I have like, uh, yeah. I, I told you, I, so I would yeah. do the high pass thing for sure. I yeah. would never go uh, above a 12 because uh, those filters are face shifting. So you, you don't mm. want to have uh, extreme filters because they will shift, they will mess with the face. Is that, that, is that yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Also, uh, I would cut, like you said, so I would only cut with linear face EQs. So if you want to buy EQ, look for a linear phase EQs to cut frequencies, right? I would never boost. I would just say, oh, but I like this and I would boost. I would never do that with, with a linear phase EQ, but I would only cut with a linear phase EQ. So, because you asked me like, because I put in a note like Yeah, and phase. what's the difference? Because I don't so, know uh, what, what that So, linear phase means. keeps the phase... Um, I, I'm not sure exactly in technical terms of differences, but if there's two kinds of EQs, you have linear phase and you have minimum phase EQs, right? If you boost with uh, minimum with linear phase EQ, something weird happens to the sound. It's called pre-ringing. So mm -hmm. you don't want to boost too much with linear phase EQs. And I take it further. I don't boost at all with linear phase EQs. I just don't okay. do it because okay. I can hear this pre-ringing very clearly, especially with, like you talk with the build-up, right? You start boosting all over the place, then mm -hmm. bam, uh, there's some weird sound. But they're very precise. These e these linear phase EQs are very precise. They, there's a very precise control for Q, right? For ah, how okay, wide. I like see. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. they're they're great for cutting. Right. They're great ah, for yeah, cutting. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. But boosting, I would do with minimum phase EQs. And okay. the um, the characteristics of minimum phase EQs that they have special curves, right? That usually those mm. curves are preset. You cannot change the curves. Okay. Right. So Neve is a, has a is a very famous one. SSL is, uh, even though you can mess a little bit with the Q there, but the curves are kind of set. Um, mm -hmm. There's uh, Mach EQ, CQ, those kind of EQs, like very ah, specialized It's EQs. funny because I do actually do always use the SSL for, for uh, boosting stuff. Yeah, good. And uh, the, the, the EQ6 of waves yes. to, to, to uh, cut. But that's exactly but what I, I didn't I do. know why I was doing it, but <laughs> sounds better. It's it's sound, it sounded better to me, but uh, so yeah. but the okay. what I do for my like quick tactic, if you don't want to, or actually I still do it even though I have time. I do the filter thing, like you said, like the high pass filter. Mm -hmm. Then I would sweep between 400 and 600 to see if mm -hmm. there's mud in the track, uh, like a boominess mm -hmm. or or muddiness. Because if it's if there's mm -hmm. mud, it's there, right? Mm -hmm. Usually there is, like say 95% of the time there is. Sometimes when the preamp is really good, for instance, mm -hmm. if you use the Apollo Twin preamp, use the rope and with a very good mic, there probably won't be any mud. But then you hear, oh, there is no mud in this track because I would do the same thing as you. I would sweep, you know, like ah. Oh. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would sweep between two uh, two thousand and four thousand, or two K and four K, to yeah, see yeah, yeah. if there is a harsh sound. You could describe it as a harsh di- digital sound. Mm-hmm. That is usually there. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I, very rare that it's not there. And I would cut mm-hmm. that too, but very little, right? Like two dB maybe, like one yeah, yeah. dB, pretty yeah. wide Q. Well, the thing when you cut is that you, you evaluate how bad the, the stuff sounds and how, how loud and obvious it is. And yeah. If it's mild, you 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 do one point one point five, and it's really bad. You you can go up to, right. to three yeah, or no, maybe no, no. four if it's no, really really bad. No, those two frequencies I would actually yeah. only cut about two two and a half. But okay. if I hear there's a problem, like what you talk mm-hmm. about the artifact, and I will search that frequency, like you said, and I would yeah, yeah. cut that like six dB, you know, very small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. but I I don't do the thing that you d- did anymore, like finding the frequency because I found that. As I, I would spend a lot of time doing that and mm-hmm. then I would I would improve the sound somewhat but the, the the end result would still be some kind of muddy or digital thing and that's always around mm-hmm. those frequencies so if let's say you cut around 3k on every track even mm-hmm. without listening mm-hmm. you've cut out a frequency that is sound digital just over on, mm-hmm. on the board right so it probably is going to sound better probably mm-hmm. like, let's say mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure it's going to sound better so that's my quick way of EQing. That's cutting. And then boosting, which I would do with a minimum phase EQ, like mm-hmm. the knee for SSL. I have my preferences for which instrument. Then I would look for the body of the instrument, which is always, if it's not a bass, like a bass is different, but let's say it's like from a cello up like saxophone, it will be somewhere between 200 and 500, 200 to 400, between there, mm-hmm. usually like 220, right? Or mm-hmm. like uh, 400. And mm-hmm. I would boost that with a white, uh, curve, yeah. but that's yeah. uh, then I use a minimum phase. Usually, I cannot change the curve; it's just it's there, right? Mm-hmm. And I would search for the air of the instrument. So that's probably right. b- between six and ten k, and I would boost that with a shelf. Mm-hmm. That's it. I that's what I do for every instrument. Yeah, but uh, but but do you? Wh- what I do is that wh- when I cut, I solo the track. Yeah. When I boost, I listen with the whole mix. Can no, I do, do both that as well. I I, do, I do solo okay. because I want to be very precise with it, and then I listen right. in the s- and then I listen to the track if you see if it works, of course. Okay. okay. But uh, yeah, so but but I mean your your method that you we're using is of course a, a tried and true method. It's just that I found after mixing a lot of stuff that there's always this mud problem around. Four five hundred. Yeah. But uh, you're right. Uh, we we discussed that yeah. before, and and, and, and I, I totally agree. Uh, usually, d- these are the two points. Yeah. Uh, and the other stuff, this, th- those are just problems with the room or something, right? But but they should be obvious. Like you're like, this mm. is really annoying sound. Where is it? Uh, oh, there. Well, bam, gone. Right. Yeah. And by the way, by the way, it's really useful to to if we still have people who are not in interesting I- interested <laughs> in mixing uh, <laughs> that are there for live performances. To well, there's 14 the sound people. In no, there's 14 people, man. Okay, yeah. to, for, for the sound engineer yep. sometimes. Yep. It's really helpful to, to... Usually I'm the one in the band that's going... S- Me that, too. That's yeah. being sent in the, r- in the room to actually hear the, the, um, the PA, right? If there is a PA. Um, to be able to identify those frequencies, you can use an app uh, like a tuner, and you s- just sing the the frequency. Yeah, uh, true. And and to help the guy say, uh, yeah, that, that that there's a feedback, and and uh, it's uh, four forty. It, it yeah, it's yeah, whatever, yeah. and yeah. and just give him the precise. You can save up so much time, and 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 of course the the, s- the performance and the sound is going to to get that much better if he has a per- because most there are a lot of sound engineer they have a per- per- parametrical EQ yeah, but they have no way of ident- in the identifying what's the frequency that's problematic. There. They also probably know and nothing about EQ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've been into and, many, <laughs> and 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 there are, there are, there are some that are really classical because it's just it's just the size of the room, and you would get a a really awful bump and feedback around like uh, one twenty. It just it's just the the size of the room, or, yeah. or and and you s- you save yourself so much trouble by by just being the guy that uh, yeah it's one twenty please. And just boom, just very quickly for, for bass yeah. because if people want to know with bass bass I uh, don't. High pass on bass. I never mm-hmm. high pass bass instruments. If if there's okay. some uh, if there's a, a problem with like sub, I will fix it in the master because I don't want to touch the bass instruments. 
-hmm. I do low pass. So I cut off everything above 6K or something. 5K, okay. 6K. Interesting. But then yeah. what I do is I search for the mod, which is probably mm -hmm. there. Uh, the digital sounds is usually not really there in bass. Might be there, but probably is not there. So I don't leave it alone. But then I would search for the fundamental frequency of that instrument. And with a double yeah. bass, it's usually 80. 80 hertz, mm -hmm. 80, 90. Sometimes it can be 60, but that it's usually a kick mm -hmm. drum. And then I would uh, use a band pass filter, so white, and, mm -hmm. and raise that to get more fundamental. So that's okay. what I do with the bass. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So le let's go to uh, not the, the third element for me is, is compression. And uh, I, of course, I made this Facebook post that said, yeah, you should uh -huh. just compress everything. And I got a lot of, <laughs> 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 a lot of uh, hate mail. Like, uh, well, you don't know what you're talking about. And, uh, but um, what is your view on compression? Well, my, my view on compression is the, is the same. Um, because there might be some people, uh, like Cha would be one of those people, would be like, no, it has to, to sound natural. Don't do anything. And I can, I can see that point. Uh, because in the end, like, if you listen to a string quartet or a jazz band, or it doesn't matter what, and you're in the room, and there are good musicians, they listen to themselves, everything is well balanced, the room is good, you're never, I mean, that's the best musical experience you'll ever get. Real instruments, real people. And uh, to me, mixing basically uh, is trying to get back to that. Even if your goal is to make it sound natural and you still have to do some stuff to get to that point. And now if you want it to, to sound really big like CD, then it's something else. But even av having stuff to sound natural uh, implies doing stuff yeah. uh, like EQ. And why, why is that? Because usually when people uh, record in the same room, uh, people will close mic yeah. them. So the mics are really close because the sound engineer wants to have control, of course. And what it means is that you, if you record a violin or a guitar or any s instrument really that close, what you get is not what uh, a real person, the real audience wi will hear, like if they sit uh, 20 meters. So basically the, the, the way I see mixing is like just making up for those things. So, so, so compression, I, I, I see it in, in the same, in the same way. It's, it's like, uh, the mic is really close, so you get a lot of dynamics. Like for vocals, it's so it's so obvious. Of like uh, so someone singing is, it can be really so, it, the voice, the human voice is so loud. If if you have someone talking to your your ear, it it, it will hurt. If, even if they don't they don't shout, they just talk normally. It's really really loud, and it gets quiet. So. That's basically what's what uh, comp compression is all about uh, in, in in that example. So then it depends what what your aim is uh, and what what you want to do. So you you it really depends. You, there's the attack, how much of that you want to keep or, or how much of that you want to keep. There's the sustain. Do you want to 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 have that note live longer right. for guitar? Yeah. Um, and how loud. The whole thing uh, should uh, or close the, the the whole thing. You uh, how, uh, how how you mean how uh, um, how apparent in the mix, right? Yeah, or, or, yeah. Or yeah, like yeah, like in your, in face. your face, in, in your, your face, or or in the background. Uh, so I, I want to say something th about uh, some interesting things you said. I have I think I can add something because mm -hmm. you said like yeah, the close micing sound is not the sound that you would actually call natural. But even mm -hmm. when it's acoustic mm -hmm. and you're sitting in the hall, people mm -hmm. don't, people that, musicians that think, I don't like a compression, all those people there are hearing your music with compression because yeah, the air, air, yeah, air between you, <laughs> yeah. the sound, and their ears is yeah, compression, yeah. is compressing yeah. that sound. Yeah, yeah. And when people are listening to your music at home, they're not going to sit at the same place as sitting uh, in a concert hall, or probably they're going to use headphones. Yeah, and now the music is this close to the air. There is yeah. almost no air anymore, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why you have to introduce compression. Yeah, because yeah. you want to actually give people the experience that they're in the room with the, with the musicians. 
-hmm. and compression is just part of the sound they're hearing anyway right but that's yeah. just a little small and, thing. and also that the, the, the um, this that element that which is really important so what it means is that basically if you have a closed mic, uh, what you just said is that if you want to emulate something natural of someone being like 20 meters apart, you have to compress because you have to make up for, for the air that's not there. Right. But also there's the the, the brain trickery uh, that happens. So um, what I mean by that is everybody has had that, that feeling when you suddenly you um, you're talking with someone and suddenly there's a really loud noise. Everybody is going to be heard by that. But if you were sitting in a really loud environment, right. even louder than that noise, everybody would be fine. It's because you, you, your ears or your brain opens up or closes down. And that will happen with, with the dynamics of the sound when you listen to, to a band. And you want to emulate that through compression to um to trick the br the, the brain into thinking oh that that sound is so big at this moment uh and that's that's what gives the impression of uh, loudness so or, what is uh, your work what's your workflow for compression do you have like a standard workflow for compression or not uh it, it's mostly by instruments uh so 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 usually i use um compression on on every track and and then uh, usually if it's a big project, I will have uh, uh, so uh, master buses. So what I mean by that is uh, if I have multiple mics on on an instrument, I have I create a right. a, a bus a track with only that instrument. I would have then another compression there, and then of course on the bus master so for the, the the whole thing, and then also compression uh, parallel. Compression. Do you mix into the oh. compression on the on the mix bus or not? I do because I if I'm going to to have it at the master, I want to to save time. Yeah, I mix. Right? I mix. I mix uh, into uh, the yeah. compression on the mix bus. Yeah. yeah, I I try to 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 keep the limiter. Um, so basically, limiting is is just compressing to to infinity, right? Yeah. So so I I try to keep it really 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 um, almost not active. Right. I, 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 because uh, then I can. Uh, I have I, no limiter on my mix on my mix bus because I, I I mix uh, always to a level where you can measure the the, the loudness of your track, right? So I have mm. always a loves meter, right? So loves is a standard for how how loud sound is perceived by the human ear, and I always keep a loves. So for people that don't know, when you listen to a commercial track. Oh, no, now let's say that when you listen to YouTube, it's always around minus 14 loves because that's the standard for YouTube. So even if you would mix something that is like minus 10 loves, then YouTube would just turn it down to minus 14 loves. So that's that's why now everything is changing yeah. to minus 14 because right there's no point in minus 10 yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's going to end up on iTunes or YouTube or Spotify and they all have, they, they made an agreement it's going to be minus 14. So minus 14 loves is like the maximum you can do with your track. So I try to mix or try, I mix at minus 21. So that gives me yeah, yeah. seven dB loves to, uh -huh. to, to to play with during mastering. So minus 21. So I don't need a limiter because it's, it's not gonna... Uh, yeah, okay. And yeah. uh, that's in interesting. So what what is the plugin you use to, to uh, have that measure of loudness? Uh, so if you I want a free that. plugin, uh, the best oh, one yeah. is called Ulean. W-O-U-L-E-A-N, Ulean. But I myself use uh, Metric AB, but that's a ah, plugin yeah, that, that measures mean. like tons of stuff, but also loves. Okay. How do you spell that again? I'm going to write it e down. U, something. like you, you. Yeah. And then L E A N. You lean, and it's a free. Ah, okay. It's very good loves. Uh, ah, yeah. Good. It, it also measures peak. Uh, it measures ah, through right. skill DB. Okay. Very good. So. So my, uh, I'll, I'll give my work for full compression because it's going to be very quick. I first look at the track to see if it has um, very loud peaks in it. Like, like if that, if I can see like one peak is like this and then it's like that. If that is the case, I will use first a limiter to get rid of those peaks because I don't want my compressor to react to those peaks, right? I don't mm -hmm. want to, because if I put a normal compressor that, let's say I want to use a compressor, I'm going to tell what I'm, but I want to use it for a certain sound. If I if that compressor is gonna react to those peak, 
it's not going to react anymore to this peak. But I want the yeah, capacitor to react to this peak, so I first have to get rid of this peak. So I would use a peak limiter for that, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, but I wouldn't use a like a normal mastering limiter. I would always use, uh, or I would probably use the 1176 peak uh, compressor, but in limit in in, comp in uh, peak limit mode. I can also use an LA2A in uh, in limiter mode. It's, it's a little bit less effective, but for some instruments, it's nice. But usually, let's say it's 1176. That's the black compressor. Put mm -hmm. it in. In in, uh, in limit mode, which just means I put the ratio to twenty, yeah, right? right, and then I would just put the the attack and sustain to the fastest it's possible. So it would just mm -hmm. get the peak, bam, and it's gone, right? And then I would use compression. So if it has no peaks, I wouldn't do that. But uh, mm -hmm. many instruments do have peaks. Then I would use compression, and I would use it. But people always say, "Oh, compression is to control the dynamics." Yes, but I can do that with automation. So mm -hmm. I would use compression more to control the transient, so the attack of the sound and the sustain. Mm -hmm. So if I feel like this is an instrument that needs a lot of attack, like it needs to at least to be like this, right? So for instance, mm -hmm. I'm doing this tango now, mm -hmm. and the piano is like bang, doom, bang. You know, it's like it's like this, and it's, she played it like that. But I can make it more by mm -hmm. using compressor to get that attack more in your face, right? Mm -hmm. So then I would use a compressor that can do that. Like an 1176, they can that can get that attack by letting a little bit of the attack through. So I put mm -hmm. the attack of the compressor. Yeah, this is confusing because it's let's say yeah. I'm going to use transient for the this, and I'm yeah. attack is the control on the compressor. So I want to hear a transient. So I would put the attack open, like not the fastest because I wanted, and yeah. then it would react as soon as the transient has hit. So I would look. Okay, I hear the transient and it is it is clamping down. So you would hear that transient more than the rest of the the chord, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if I have an, an instrument like violin and I want more sustain, I want the notes to sound long, right? like I want like this really luscious sound, I would use, uh, I would play with the release more. So I would put the attack very, uh, maybe faster so that the transient is gone, for instance, right? But then I would open the sustain so the note, it keeps, it, it, the. I'm not gonna explain how it works, but if you open the release, sorry, the release, mm -hmm. the, the note's gonna have more sustain. And that's mm. why I use compression, not for the dynamic control, because I can do that with automation. Mm. And I do that before I use the compressor. So the mm -hmm. compressor is only there for me to, to play with the transients and the sustain. And mm -hmm. then people say, but you can use a transient designer for that. Yeah, you can do that, but it, it doesn't give me as much of the control, I feel. Like it, it can mm -hmm. do one trick, right? It can bring out the transient. But I want to play with, it's also because I'm used to it with the compressor. Yeah. Plus, Every compressor has a certain sound. Like for instance, the LA2A is just a warm sound. It, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the compressor sounds warm. Uh, 1176 just kind of sound very has a lot of bite. You know, uh, a manly a compressor is gonna have a pristine sound. It's gonna sound like it's, it's recorded with very high quality microphone, right? So that kind of thing is also very important about the compressor. So I'm I'm gonna look for the sound I want, and I'm gonna look for the transient versus sustain thing. Mm. So that is my. Do you use the the S SSL? Uh, no, compressor? I don't. You mean the no? bus compressor or the normal? Yeah, compressor? Yeah, the the bus the bus. No, I don't use the. Well, depends on the st on the music style, but I don't produce music that requires that compressor. If I would be producing, uh, like uh, rock, right, or mm -hmm. um, uh, maybe not drum and bass, but but m more like let's say. Not electronic, it doesn't really work. It has to be like this really growly sound, like this really fat, like gluey sound with bass guitar, bass okay. guitar, and, and lots of kicks in the drums. Then I would use that compressor because that compressor makes everything sound very muddy, but in a good good way. Mm -hmm. Right? Do you know what I mean? Okay. But it hey. doesn't, it's not an open sound. So, because yeah. I make music that has to be I like it on guitars, on acoustic gu guitars, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No. I, 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 I like yeah, the, the, yeah. what it does to, to uh, like a uh, gypsy guitar. Yeah? No, no, I don't like that. <laughs> no? But, but yeah, we can okay. talk for hours of that. No, I don't like <laughs> it. Just, no, because it, it is like, um, it is like a very, people call it gooey sound, right? Like a gooey, like warm. But for me, yeah, it's yeah. a little bit too, it kind of mixes everything together. So mm -hmm. I lose the clarity. Yeah, right. Right? Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I don't like that, especially not on the mix bus. 
right? Okay. Because I, I try to create mixes that sound very open. Now, of course, I w if I were producing uh, Oasis, yes, yeah, yeah, then I want that. Okay. So th <laughs> <laughs> then I would use the SSL mix bus, but I. So, so what would you use on on the mix bus then? Uh? For for like a like a like Young at Heart or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I would use a manly, uh, the manly variable mu compressor. I is, don't know right? that one. It's very pristine. Um, sometimes I like to use a Pultec compressor on the mix bus. Right? Which it, I don't that know is either. in between mm -hmm. for me, in between the, the manly and the uh, SSL. So it, it gives this warmth okay. and this gooey sound, but it still sounds mm -hmm. kind of pristine. But mm -hmm. for instance, I was, mm -hmm. I was mastering for another guy. Um, he sent me his tracks and I mastered for him and uh, I sent him a message. I said, yeah, it sounds, it sounds good, but uh, I made some mixing mistake. Would you mind just running it through your uh, compressors again? And said, and by the way, I'm losing this guitar lick at like two minutes 30. And I listened and I, I was listening. He said, yeah, he's right. You are losing the guitar sound. And that, you know why? Because I used the Pultec compressor and the Pultec is kind of gooey and it was a very busy track with lots of elements and it kind of buried oh the... Yeah. Okay guitar line so then i changed it to the manly and it just immediately bam sounded pristine open now other uh, things in the track sounded less pleasant to me mm -hmm. but yeah y i cannot lose this guitar line now what i could do is of course i use both compressors and then automate them but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but would you see uh, so now i'm very particular with which compressors i use so it's like really like i can yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. good nice um let's 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 go because we have talking for a long time man. Uh, i want to go to our top three plugins ah, yeah. okay and i want to do it um so i made top three plugins and i have a context for it right so i like it's a top three and i ordered them in this way because of this reason so i ah, okay do you, you have a context uh, uh, for your plugins or is it just your favorite yeah I, I totally have a context okay yeah. what's your context uh well, it depends on the plugin, uh, of course. But uh, if I had, uh, do we go with the first one? The, no, the, but the you ordered them. Why you the ordered them in what? I, I didn't order or order them, but uh, but uh, I I I choose them for really specific things. Ah, okay. So I ordered mine. Right. I can tell you. The I ordered mine. Okay. I have nothing. Right. I have a DAW. That's it. And I have mm -hmm. no money. I have very little money. I can, okay. I can only buy three plugins. Oh, that's the context. Th you're that's you're my talking context. About. That's oh, my yeah, context. Okay, all yeah. right. Uh, I don't have a context. Okay. okay. <laughs> I, mean, so I have yeah, three your different. Your context could be your yeah. favorite plugins or something. Yeah, yeah, okay. But yeah. these are not okay. even my favorite plugins. Uh, like, um, these are not the plugins I would show to people, like, look at this one, you know? It's like, mm -hmm. I would maybe show them uh, metric AB because it's so cool with the reference to things you can do and metering. But yeah, it does nothing to the sound. So, and it's mm -hmm. a lot of money. So, am I really going to spend 200, dollar, 200 euros, dollars? <laughs> to buy a plugin <laughs> for referencing it's super important <laughs> it's it's the most important plugin i have yeah. right but but it's not it's not gonna buy it if i only have three so that's my top three okay. so what's your number three so we're gonna like and then you oh i, I didn't one. really order them pick one. but then you can uh pick one. okay i'm just going to pick one wait I, I go through my notes because i forgot already ah yeah um so i like the max bass uh and it's it's really for specific reasons it's just to use it so so just for for people to know what it does um it en enables um when people would say listen on their phone or ipads it enables um them to hear frequencies that are not really in the frisk uh, that can't be produced by the device they use uh so what it does is it takes lower frequencies and it produces harmonics of those frequencies um so you you can do whatever you want with that uh and uh suddenly they get the illusion to hear the bass specifically so uh that's what i use to to make sure that people actually can hear a double bass on an iphone right and i i put it first because uh most people i never do that but most people <laughs> listen to music especially if you post on on, on facebook uh uh, on their phones and uh, then if I I mean it's ridiculous right y you have a trio and y if you don't do that you can end up with a mix like if somebody plays it on on their phone it's like you muted the bass there is no bass not at all it's it's gone so um, uh, 
So yeah, that's that would be my my first pick. But why did you pick Max uh, Maxbase? Because there is a updated plugin. It's called Rbase. You know that, right? Uh, you don't no. have it, maybe. But Rbase. Ah, yeah, Rbase. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I, I have that too. Okay. But I, I, but you can't you can't uh, switch the frequencies, can you? Yeah, you can. You can. Yeah, yeah. And so you can decide. Uh, okay, I yeah, have you to can check decide how much uh, you want from the original sound and the stuff. Yeah, it's ex exactly the same. Okay, yeah. I have to check it. Uh, and I think it yeah. has a little bit updated uh, up, uh, algorithms. But so yeah, that okay. the plugin is really nice. I never use it. Um, I feel it, I don't know. It it does. <laughs> I know it does something, but I feel I can get the same effect with other plugins, but they mm -hmm. don't do necessarily do the same thing. Right mm -hmm. with the, uh, it's very interesting because it's use your plugin is using the theory of the missing, missing fundamental, right? Where you yeah. just play uh, and then you hear yeah. Yeah. I I just assume people are not gonna listen on their. Uh, <laughs> yeah, on but their you're wrong on this one. <laughs> 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 so my number three plugin. So I I ordered them like from the the least important to the most important. Okay. But so it's three. I only can buy three plugins and then my mm -hmm. money is gone. Okay. And uh, least important. So the least important plugin is the LA2A compressor. Okay. Right. So the LA2 compressor is not really a compressor in the sense that it's traditional compressor. Compressor. It's actually a leveler. It was made for radio. It was made to catch uh, f uh, differences in speech between uh, interviewer and interviewee on the spot. Right. So yeah, yeah. it is has a very slow attack. It's not getting rid of the peaks. Mm. It's more to get the sustain going and to get the level of the of the of the program material at the source like cons constant. However, it is a super nice, nice sounding plugin. And the brand, right? You could you could use the UA one, which is great. I've used it in the past, but I don't use their DSP. I don't use their hardware anymore, so I don't have the UA one. Waves make makes a great LA two A, yeah. right? So. I mean, and it's super cheap. I think you you can buy it separately for like thirty, or you can buy it in the uh, CLA compressor package for like seventy, and it's totally worth it. But let's say you want to only want to buy that, then buy the LA two A. It's you can actually use it pretty much on any track, but be aware that you're not you can mess the transients of the track, right? So. If you have a really transient source like drums, don't don't use the LA two A. But on many other tracks, even bass, it can work. Now, my second plugin is gonna make sure that I don't have to use it on every track. But the mm -hmm. LA two A is, is very nice and it is so easy to use, right? Because it's only two controls. Mm -hmm. You can uh, determine how much the compressor is gonna work, like the gain reduction, mm -hmm. and you can uh, have enough to see how loud the sound is gonna be. But yeah. that should yeah. be the same as it is before the plugin. So you, it's yeah. called level matching, right? So you turn the plugin off mm -hmm. and you see how loud it is. You turn it on. If it's louder, you have to turn down again to make sure it's the same level. And then mm -hmm. you uh, work with the other knob to, to look at the gain reduction. Now, for me personally, I would never go beyond 3 dB gain reduction with an LA-2A. I know there are mm -hmm. people that do like 6 dB on vocals. It's crazy. I would never do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like beyond 3 dB, it's, it, sound, it sounds like somebody's actually at the uh, yeah. control, like pulling the fader down. With right? the faders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah like yeah. pulling the fader down and then putting it up again. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. that sound I don't yeah. like. Yeah, so yeah, for yeah. me, uh, 3 dB gain reduction maximum. And the plugin sounds very warm. So if you have yeah, a cold yeah. source, it sounds it sounds like like no human, it sounds almost not human, then the LA-2A would actually sound really nice without doing anything. Right? Yeah, and there is there's a little uh, knob on the it's already also on the original Teletronics Teletronics yeah compressor because and you can determine it's a side chain so you can determine how much of the frequency spectrum it affects. Mm -hmm. I always put it on flat so it it uh, is working on the complete spectrum, yeah. and you can put it in limit mode even, which mm -hmm. changes the uh, um, ratio a little bit a little bit higher and attack is a little bit faster so. It's it's mm. a great plugin, uh, number mm. number three. So what's uh, number two? Well, it's funny because my number two is the LA two. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the reason? So I just what's just uh, yeah, yeah, um, just uh, uh, you put that on vocals, and I guess it's re it's reference. I think it, it has been used so much on vocals that 
you're just going to hear something that you liked in in many many CDs. True. Doesn't matter what genre you you like because the reference is so much important. Yes. Uh, the what we identify as sounding good is always going to yeah it's basically a reference to what we like what what our our, our best cd is what, what what is the sound that we that we we really like and so it's not it's not objective it's really and and that sound that warm sound is is on so many cds that just yeah you 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 can you can't go wrong with, with, with that one because it it does something really magical especially to the vocals you put that on and it's like ah oh, okay it starts to to sound like a yeah. a real recording. But it's but not somebody singing in in his room, it's right? It's true, but it's it, you know that's why. <laughs> also because it it makes the focus sound very smooth, and you don't want these transients in focals. Yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. want them in focals. But yeah, you yeah. but you but you would never put it on a rap focal where you but want the, color, the transients, right? So yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I I I mean, even if you didn't use the compressor as a compressor, it would still be worth it in my in my opinion. Just the the the, the warmth. It, I agree. It, it gives agree. a. Yeah. Uh, actually, I, I I I learned recently that compressors they, they were um, invented to prevent um, radio to explode. Yeah. <laughs> that's why the LA2 was. Really that's, I to, just told you that. That's why the LA2 was there. It was to make yeah, sure yeah. the level stayed consistent. Yeah. yeah, it's so funny. But also, the LA2 is an optical compressor. So there's three kinds. Now there's more kinds of compressors, but three big categories. Right? You have FAT compressors, optical compressors, and tube compressors. So, or VCA compressors, sorry, VCA compressors. So the uh, optical compressors, they're always smooth and slow attack, right? So the LA-2A is like the uh, the ultimate optical compressor, right? It's like the top of the line optical compressor. So that's, it is always good to have, if you have multiple compressors, to make sure that you have one of each category. So if you buy another compressor, and then now we're gonna get to my number two, Mm -hmm. Don't make it another optical one, it's because my number mm -hmm. two is an 1176 compressor, mm -hmm. and it's a fat compressor, and so a fat compressors always have very fast attack, and and also very fast uh, release. In fact, the 1176, if you put it on the slowest, it's still pretty fast, right? It's, it's not slow at all. It's it's still pretty fast. I think the slowest is like 0 0.1 second, and the fastest is like 0 oh. 0.01 second, something like that. Mm -hmm. I, don't quote me on these numbers, but it's yeah, fast. Yeah. So the, there's two reasons why I have the 1176. The first reason is that on its own, it's it's a beast, right? You, it works great on transient instruments or instruments that you need to have more transients, right? Second reason, you can use it as a limiter, right? By mm -hmm. putting it on 20. There's mm -hmm. even a button called all, where you can press them all. But let's say you put it on 20, and you put it on the fastest release and attack, and it's a great limiter, so you can use it in mastering. I, I wouldn't necessarily use it in mastering because it, it gives a very aggressive sound, but let's say I only have three plugins and I need a limiter, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. So then I have I have one. But the third reason is, and I, I didn't hear you say that, but it is a great combination with the LA-2A because mm -hmm. you're, you're right, the LA-2A is on vocals, but usually after the 1176. So they put the 1176 on in peak limit mode, so 20, mm -hmm. right, fastest mm -hmm. release, to get rid mm -hmm. of the peaks. But it mm -hmm. also would give this, the vocals a, this kind of forward sound. Mm -hmm. And then would, they put the LA-2A on to smooth the focus out and to give the warm sound. But it, mm -hmm. the warm sound is not getting rid of the forward sound, but now you have a focal that sounds both forward in your mm -hmm. face, right? You, you're, it's yeah. present, you're listening to it, and it is smooth and warm and warm. Right, <laughs> so was that your beer? Yeah, that was my. No, it's, it's empty. <laughs> Good. And you can turn them around. If on violin, I, I I used to turn them around. I put the yeah, LA, right. I put the yeah. LA two first in in uh, in uh, limiter mode, and then I put the uh, eleven seventy six behind it. Uh, but then that was not in the peak limit mode, right? So so yeah, to yeah. give first to give it the warm sounds, and but then I want bite because especially if it's just violin, I want some more attack and bite and rhythmic. So. Mm -hmm. The combination of these two these two uh, compressors is gold, mm -hmm. not only for the compression or the attack state, but also for the sound, right? The, mm -hmm. the, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. sound of the instruments. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I have two compressors so far. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what's your, what's are you aiming for, for for three? <laughs> no, what's, what's your number one? 
Uh, my number one is uh, Altiverb. Okay. Uh, but that could be anything that can read uh, impulse, impulse uh, yeah. response. So, so just to describe what it what it does. Um, so, it's basically they it re a emulates a real room. So, what they actually do is uh, go with a bunch of sound engineer in uh, wherever in Sydney Opera or uh, Berlin uh, Philharmonic, and they create this digital image of the room and you can use that to actually put people in the same room so so it creates the illusion that uh, that uh, everybody is playing in that space and i would use that uh, in parallel meaning that uh, uh, so i send my signal to uh, all of my signals actually to to a track with that reverb on and uh, where the direct s sound is muted and the uh, and the mix is wet to a hundred percent so basically you only hear the reverberation of the room and it works so well and you would mix uh, it in or do you have uh, any, any yeah that, and then i mix with the fader and usually okay. i use two i i i, I use uh, a small room Usually uh, it's funny because I use uh, I use a Jet Studio, which is a studio in Brussels. Okay. But it happens <laughs> that I really like that room, yeah. so I've been in that room yeah. in a way, uh, not in a way. I've been in that room, but um, uh, so that's a small room. So that that will um, and it's funny because you could put it you could put that really loud and you don't really notice that it, it, it's. Uh, ambience it's more like ambience reverb right? yeah yeah yeah. It's, yeah so so it's it's to get rid of the impression that somebody is is whispering on or playing in your ear yeah like like yeah, really yeah. close to you to create distance and, uh, between the instrument and the microphone right and then uh, uh um, a bigger room for for uh like uh yeah to what's your favorite space, what's your favorite maybe. big space then in Alpha uh berliner Phil philharmonic yeah. 12, yeah. 12 uh, meters. I made a CD with that. <laughs> I made a it CD sounds with that. so good. It sounds so good. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's crazy. But do you know yeah. how they make the impulses? They, they talk, what what, what uh, Alexander is talking about is like they you have uh, this this plugin, but then you can load in the acoustics of other rooms. But do you know how they make these acoustics? Which you said they image the room, but do you know how they do it? Yeah. Uh, uh, my understanding, but I am not really sure, is that they, they basically put mics everywhere in the room, and then they uh, they have a big source that goes that that they will put in different places, of course, and that would go just something I, I like that. I thought they would do it with a. I thought they do it with a starter gun. Oh, maybe. And oh, they yeah, would yeah, cut I off. They right. would cut yeah, off yeah, yeah. the, uh, of course, the, the the sound, but because it's, there would be it would reverberate so long. They would get yeah, that. I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm the, not the, sure the, 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 no, no, no. The frequency swipe is, is for something else. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So now I feel kind of bad. Yeah. I should have put a reverb on, but but <laughs> I'm going to assume <laughs> that the doll that you have has reverb in it. <laughs> 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 Very bad reverb. <laughs> because my number one, that my number one plugin that I think um, is, is, is a, is a, is a, um, uh, linear phase eq and i'm gonna name it a specific one called mm -hmm. neutron 2 equalizer it's a uh, by isotope and the reason okay. i pick it i picked it is because it has also a dynamic eq in it right i was see i see somebody ah, talked about okay. multiple compression which is, is more or less the same thing right so multiple compression mm -hmm. or dynamic eq is where you take a certain frequency spectrum and you put compress compressor there now i don't like multiple compression uh, because mm -hmm. it sounds artificial to me, but mm -hmm. sometimes it is the best solution to a big problem. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Right? Because yeah. it, it's like the singer, every time she sings the word you, there's this horrible frequency. But if you yeah, yeah. Uh, solve it with the EQ, then all other words. So then you'll get the very difficult task of automating all the use and stuff. Now, yeah, dynamic yeah. EQ will, will help you in a pinch. How, yeah. how often do I use dynamic EQ? Maybe once every 20 mixes. But but then oh, yeah. man, it's okay. great. So that has had it has dynamic EQ, but it is also just a regular EQ, and it has a ton of curves. So I, I just said don't boost with a linear phase EQ. But if I have mm -hmm. only one EQ, 
and it has its linear phase and I have to boost with it, then it would be that one. Because it has uh, curves that you won't find in other EQs, like a Bex curve, Bexendal curve, which is a yeah. very gentle slope, right? So it's great for boosting. Um, and it, ha it also has great an uh, analytical feedback, right? So you can actually see what do you, mean by uh, you can see problems in your track ah, just okay. by the way it gives information. So it's ah, great. Okay, okay, it's okay. a great tool to use for mastering to see uh, if your if your curve is, is okay. You can solve mm. problems with the dynamic EQ. You can use it as a regular EQ. It's very uh, versatile. So that would be my number one. The first plugin I would buy if okay. I if I have no plugins. Oh, that's okay. that's Bebop. Yeah, people were asking it's for Bebop. <laughs> It's beautiful. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, but uh, I'm surprised that you, you, you don't use a dynamic EQ more than that because for, for vocals, for, for siblings. No, it's, so it's my vocal vocal mixing is very uh, specialized. There's some some secrets there. <laughs> okay, no, no, okay. I can, no, I can. <laughs> there are some tricks. But for instance, I, there is five reverbs on the vocal. In my vocal mix, there's five reverbs. <laughs> uh, so, uh, no, four reverbs and a doubler. So I always put a doubler on the vocal, which okay. doubles the voice uh, a little uh, the slight delay, pitch I guess. B above yeah. and yeah. below. And I mix pitch. it in very softly. And then the, the voice becomes really um, special. Okay. Uh, this is standard technique in pop music, right? But, or but it's, a, it's, a, it's a different pitch. Yeah, it's a different pitch. Saying? It's, a, different it's pitch. a bit like the a ADT real. Uh, yeah, real yes, ADT yes, yes. It's like that. Stuff. But then I okay. use. I use actually. Um, there, m one of my favorite mixers is Greg Wells, right? And he uh, came out with a plugin, plugins. Uh, one is called Piano Centric. It's for piano. It's awful. Don't use it. One is called uh, mix centric, it's terrible. <laughs> okay. One is called tone centric. <laughs> that one is great. If we talk about THD, we're not going to talk about that. That is one of the best. And one is called voice centric. It's terrible. Don't use it. But the doubler, okay. there is like one knob called doubler. It's great. So I would turn everything off in the plugin, put it on okay. a parallel bus, and just use the doubler. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. So nice. there's, there's like four reverbs. There is a doubler. There is a two. Comp there's two compressors. But but when you compress, when, w w w you still you're still going to need uh, some de-essing or something. Uh, yes, of course right? I use de ah, I yeah, use okay. sibilance. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, there's okay, sibilance okay. um, first, and then there okay. is a eleven se uh, okay. eleven seventy six in peak limit mode. Then there's an LA two A. Okay. Um, okay. Then sometimes when the f I feel the focal is weak. Uh, for instance, with Gizmo, this was not necessary because he's not a weak singer. He's like he, he sings with full voice. Mm -hmm. If the focus is weak, I would um, use a, another parallel bus with uh, saturation. Oh, right. Right. Uh, okay. I would use uh, an exciter saturation or just normal saturation. I would mix that in too. I would use a lot of saturation on the parallel, but then mix it in softly, stuff like that. So, okay. I mean, my vocal um, mixing is very involved. So Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, but it sounds it sounds really natural. I know. Uh, to, to my ears, so <laughs> yeah, but which it's is always nice. good. <laughs> yeah. No, but it, of course, that <laughs> is the goal, right? The goal is to yeah, sound yeah. natural, but I want the best possible. Because, like, for instance, Gizmo, he has a very cheap microphone and, and very bad preamps, <laughs> yeah. right? So I need to put uh, the sound of more, uh, more expensive preamps in there, right? Mm -hmm. If he would be recording, if he was recording with a... Uh, with the Hardy preamps or what is good for vocals, um, Neve can be nice for vocals. Then probably I would hear like, oh, this quality, this signal quality is so high. Mm -hmm. I can get rid of my THD plugins. I can get rid of the crush track. Or I didn't use a crush track for uh, for Gizmo, right? So, but if I get uh, yeah, it's, it's recorded with a Rode NT1A, right, which is like <laughs> a ninety dollar yeah. mic, and it's like yeah, this yeah. terrible focus right preamps. Yeah, then I need to work on that sound to make yeah, it yeah. more special right right that has nothing to do okay. with the quality of the singer because gizmo sings great that has nothing to do with no, that of course not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's because people listen to that vocal and they compare it to okay how does it does it compare to michael buble how does this compare to right, all these singers that they work with uh they have a, a akg c12 which is nine thousand euros right and preamps yeah. like f uh, two thousand euro preamp so uh, how can i compete yeah, yeah. with that if i don't do all these things Okay, I want to go to the last uh, thing. 
and it's a fun thing but i think my question is there because i have a a lightning round i'm going to ask you 10 questions very quick and you have to okay. answer with one sentence one uh, sentence okay <laughs> and I'm, I'm i'm checking if there's questions here how do you feel how do you feel about multiband compression so i'm gonna get my questionnaire and then you can talk about multiband compression and why you like it or not like it uh, are you <laughs> okay you're leaving <laughs> you're leaving me um, yeah. well actually i i, I use a uh, dsr um which is which is a uh, uh, dynamic compression um uh, uh, uh dynamic eq so so it, it just uh compresses certain frequencies on the violin a lot actually because there are some frequencies usually with my violin it's around uh, 2004 yeah two two 2.4k or something like that and the 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 sound there can be really harsh sometimes but not always so i like uh dsing the violin actually. oh really W yeah, w w uh, it's really slight though. It it it, it will work at, at 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 its peak. It will work like uh, it will it will get two dBs out or three dBs. Which which DSR do you use for that? Uh, the DSR uh, of Waves. How the it's just DSR? Because it's 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 convenient for me. You know uh, what they use? And I know yeah. and I know the frequency. I always use the same setup, so I don't have to listen right to the to w what I'm doing. I know this is that mic. It's my violin, so it's two two point four k. And I put it there. I, I just mess up a, a little bit with the threshold. And sometimes um, uh, I, I put it uh, for the high frequencies, like uh, 6Ks and up. Because if I if I push those frequencies, it's good. But then when I get in into the high uh, registry, it's it can harsh. be too harsh. Yeah. So so it will only work when I'm uh, playing uh, in the i uh, You should get Millennia brain. preamps. <laughs> that will solve the problem for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> but I, I have, uh, I, I'm happy with my preamps though, but uh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's not Millennia. It's not the... It's not the... But, yeah. but it, uh, <laughs> the, you know what they use in mastering... I've been to a couple of mastering studios. Uh, they usually have a DS there. They have a Wise DS. -er. You know Wise? I don't think it's in a plug-in form, mm, but that DS -er, it sounds so good. That uh, it, it's interesting to say. I I have never experimented with a DSR on violin, but it could work. It could work. Yeah. No. Because sometimes th those frequencies they they're nice most of the time, and then they get really harsh yeah. at a certain point, and I don't want to be automating. You know. Okay. Here we go. Question. Ten questions, and yeah. you can answer yes and no in, in a short sentence, but you cannot do a whole story because I know <laughs> you're good at doing whole stories. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay. <laughs> Can I refuse to answer? Yeah, I can refuse <laughs> to answer, but I don't think you <laughs> okay. want to do it. Okay. It's gonna we're gonna start off easy. Like question number one. Okay. From now on, okay. you can only play one style. What's the style? Why? Uh jazz. Uh can you be more specific? Uh uh Let's say there is gypsy uh, jazz, there is bebop, and there is uh contemporary and Latin. Um, then I would have to go with gypsy jazz because it, it it's it just it just works with violin. But ah. that's only because I'm a violinist. Good, good um, answer. I I was like maybe you would pick some kind of Balkan stuff or because you do that a lot, right? S some what? Balkan uh, stuff with the uh, Fino and Bruxelles you play. I don't I don't really do that a lot. No, no, okay. no, 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 no. Good. <laughs> 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 okay. No, jazz jazz is just fun. It's just. Yeah, you don't play cool. violin. Um, mm -hmm. You have all the knowledge that you have now about music, right? But mm -hmm. you don't. You're not playing instrument. But you have to choose one. What instrument is going to be? Piano. Why? Uh, because it's an orchestra, and let's imagine a, a pandemic arrives. Then I, I I can play, uh, you know, <laughs> music on my own. Let's imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, really, I mean, really I, piano, I know, but piano, man, yeah, yeah. everybody plays piano. It's like, it's like guitar. <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but you have a I see a piano behind you. I, yeah, yeah, I, I play a little bit, yeah. but, uh, but uh, I, I just, yeah, the, the idea of like you, you take your Chopin or whatever and you put the book there and you can sight read and you're just playing music. It's just, it's something that. Uh, okay, yeah. number three. 
If you could, if you had to be, if you couldn't be a musician, what profession would you want to be? Want to have? Uh, that's really hard. Uh, 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 it's really hard. Okay. I, 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 I'd like option. to. You get your I get <laughs> athlete, scientist, mm -hmm. educator. Could be a science educator, or <laughs> a filmmaker. Okay, scientist. Scientist. Okay. Yeah, I, I like physics a lot, but but uh, I've seen that uh, maybe you have seen that documentary about the the X boson, and you see those people. They've been s re doing research for like sixty years, maybe, and suddenly someone uh, we we are able to actually empirically. It's, it's, it's just lightning round, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and 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 they're waiting for the result of the test, and they're like, "Man, if this test proves us wrong, we've wasted fifty years yeah, yeah. doing doing math." So, so that's why I, <laughs> I was hes hesitating. Okay, okay. Because you can, yeah. Okay, number four. Okay, uh, <laughs> you uh, choose one country that you want to live in: France, UK, Netherlands, Hungary, Canada, USA. Oh, that's really hard. <laughs> with the, with the current context, uh, well, no. Let's let's say there's no pandemic, right? And 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 normal people are in charge. No, 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 no. Like the rest is the same. It's like let's say it's it's last year, <laughs> last year. <laughs> uh, I, I'm intrigued by Canada okay. mostly because it, it seems to look like the U.S. but without. Uh, I was thinking you would think more about the music scene in those guns. countries. But, uh, okay. Yeah, but the U.S. then, the okay. U.S. then. But uh, th I picked Canada because you can be really close to New York, and then I wouldn't have I wouldn't have to deal with the okay, number five. crazy stuff. Going Name on. a musical decision, musical decision in your life that you regret. A decision about your music career or whatever. Mm. Wow, that's hard. Uh, I regret. Uh, I, I don't regret anything. No, no okay, that's good. Basically, yeah. So every decision you made was I good. So what was no, 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 okay. no. But but I, but I, but regretting stuff is not really part of my. Uh, I try to learn from my mistake, but I I try to never regret something. So it's not like I have something that. Uh, of course, that there are plenty of stuff that I would do otherwise, but. Uh, that's I, a good answer. I, I so, what is yeah. your best and uh, number six? What is the best decision you ever made for m for your musical life career? Uh to try to do it uh, my job. Ah, okay, to make it your job. Okay, good. Yeah. Number seven. Yeah. Ribbon mics suck because. Uh, <laughs> because you 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 can't use only those because they pick up too much of the I uh, thought you loved the room, room and <laughs> I put it uh, this, this yeah, this, this the, the, the it's the only reason they suck for me is that you can't put them everywhere okay. because you you get too much uh, I don't like ribbon problems. mics that's why I was like and I know you okay. have your okay. favorite mic is a ribbon mic so yeah, okay. yeah. number <laughs> number eighth but but now I already know the answer I know the answer but the question was Stuff Smith or Grappelli but it's going to be Grappelli then for you yeah, I guess, but uh, I really like Stuff Smith, so so it's really not uh, just okay. more. Uh, yeah, Answer, I would have uh, more finished, to. to fin yeah, uh, no, go yeah. go go go. What do you want to say? Uh, well, I I, I feel um, to me jazz is so expressive. Uh, sometimes, but I, I, I'm digressing here. But sometimes, for example, uh, people would hear bebop players, and there's something really strong in what they are saying and to me uh if i had the life of stuff smith if i knew what it'd be to be uh to be a black musician in that context probably i would feel like playing like that yeah. but that's not really how, I've, how i feel it's not really what i want to tell because my life has been quite smooth and and easy and and so that's what i want to talk about that's deep. See what I, I was mean. just more thinking yeah. about like the way he plays. Anyway, <laughs> but okay. it's not it's not even taste, right? It's it, it's more like uh, I, I I I I'm not really angry and uh, and and speedy and and uh, uh, yeah. Number nine. <laughs> two more questions. 
Yeah. Number nine. So finish this sentence. Don't become a musician if uh, it's it's more like an, you give you tell someone else, right? Don't become if you're deaf. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Last question. <laughs> last question. From now on, you can only listen to one album for the rest of your life. Which album is is gonna be? Whoa. <laughs> uh, one album. Oh, that's really hard. Uh, Man, go, because in 10 minutes they're going to pick you up from your house and you need to have uh, the album some, in your hands. Something with Louis Armstrong. They, really? Okay. Yeah. Which one? F I don't know the albums. I, why? I don't no, know, I don't know I, why. I've never picked that. Be because because the, 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 the single tune that I've listened the most <laughs> is of Louis Armstrong, so okay. at least I would know that that tune is on, on there. Uh, no, it's an no, old star with a... We've yeah. gone for three hours almost. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at the time, man. Like two hours, 40 minutes, something like that. And there are still people there? Yeah, there's still people. There's still nine okay. people. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> at the maximum, we, I think we had 16 or something. But I mean, well. it's going to stay online. And maybe I'll I'll do some, I'll cut some expert excerpts out of it, like uh, when we talk about yeah. mixing. And, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, but it's I want to thank deep. you yeah. for coming on my channel, for making well, the you. longest, longest video ever. <laughs> my God. <laughs> we talked about a lot of stuff, so it was really great. We did, we did. Yeah, yeah. People that don't know, I talk about with Alexander about a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's and true. We, we do it through, through chat and it's like typing. <laughs> <laughs> and then he says, me, you have to watch this video. And he sends me a 16 part documentary about uh, <laughs> <laughs> about black holes or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it was great having you as a guest. Yeah, it was and uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to say goodbye to you. Uh, people that are still watching. Oh, 12 people. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Um, if you what, if you like uh, my channel, then subscribe. If you think this video is too short, let me know. <laughs> 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 and um, I will see you all in the next video. So I'm gonna end the stream here. Let me go to the right button. Bye, guys. Yeah. <laughs> go to sleep. <laughs>